If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 1 Chapter 1 POV Waaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
They went around telling everyone I had ran away from home and put on this pity party. When they finally let me out they put on this big show, to show everyone they cared. Honestly I hate them with a passion. To escape from reality I would read and watch different types of fiction, from manga to anime and watch different types of superhero movies. So I'm extremely glad I don't have to suffer from their abuse again. I feel free, even though I can barely move, I still feel free. Being introduced to Aunt May and Uncle Ben is such a surreal experience. That excitement just comes rushing back, especially when it comes to meeting characters I read about. Especially if those characters are from your favorite superhero franchise. Just hearing the name Uncle Ben all I thought about was with great power comes great responsibility. I guess now what I have to worry about is my now new Parker luck and hope it doesn't kill me early on. Chapter 2 Peter's POV It's been one year since I have been reincarnated as Peter Parker and I can say with certainty that this isn't a dream or me developing a mental disorder from the abuse. Even though I'm one years old, I feel smart, it's weird to explain. I just feel smarter, things come easier to me now and I understand problems that normally I would have problems solving. Luckily my new parents are clumsy and leave their door to their studies open, so I would just sneak in and start reading whatever I could get my hands on. These people, although it was difficult at first to see them as real people and not comic book characters, I came to care deeply about them. They have shown great care towards me like no one else has before. It's a weird feeling to have people actually care about my well-being. While I was lost in thought and reading the book in front of me, I soon felt myself be picked up. I turned to look at who it was, it was my father I see my little genius is trying to learn Richard went and picked up and looked at the book I was reading and started examining it. Once he saw it was a book about biology he put an awkward expression isn't this a little too advanced for you. I just shrugged my shoulders I don't know daddy, it seems pretty simple God, I can't believe I just called another man daddy, kill me. My new father just looked at me with skepticism, not believing what I said after all who would believe that a one year old would be smart enough to understand. The years just kept coming and going and I was soon three years old. When I turned three both mom and dad spent less time in the house but more time at work. It turns out that they are the leading scientists in Oscorp. And their leading research is about enhanced spiders, enhanced with the super soldier serum or SSS. As I saw it in their notes. Whatever they have been doing, it looks like they are close to a breakthrough and are very busy at work. Sometimes it would take weeks for me to even see them. Not that I mind since I mostly spend it with Aunt May and Uncle Ben. But it's still kinda disappointing that I don't get to see them very much, after all I did come to see them as my real mom and dad. So with nothing to do when I'm with Uncle Ben I spend most of my time reading books about whatever I could find. Whether it's about technology, physics, chemistry, or biology. But I'm not rushing through them, when I take my time reading through them and actually understand what they mean, it's a fun thing to do. It appears that thanks to my high intellect I actually possess a photographic memory, to which I'm all thankful for. Thanks to it, I actually remembered everything I learned previously which helped me advance through these books rather quickly and I don't have to waste my time rereading things I already know. One day on a random weekend while I was busy reading a knock came from my door to my room. When I opened it, it turned out it was my mother and father, my mother pulled me in for a tight hug which was followed by father wrapping his arms around us. I'm sorry I couldn't be more available honey, we're just so busy with work I just hope that you understand said mom. I just gave her a small smile as I said don't worry about it, I know how hard you guys are working. And I don't mind staying with Uncle Ben and Aunt May. They both let out a sigh of relief. I know that it looks like we are buying your affection with these but it's the only way I could think to make it up to you. Said dad as he pulled out a stack of different types of advanced books of different kinds of subjects. I can practically feel my eyes light up when I saw them. So many different types of book on technology and engineering, with these I can already imagine the different types of gadgets I would be making. Dad started ruffling my hair as he smiled I'm glad you like them kiddo, I was worried there for a SEC, normally kids your age would be excited to just see toys in front of them. I guess you are one of a kind to be this excited about books. Mom then grabbed my cheeks and pulled me in kissing them as she said with a sad smile the lab is demanding for us to stay there longer since we are close to making a great discovery, we're sorry that we are going to be absent some more baby. I just gave them a sad smile of my own it's okay I understand, you guys are busy and are trying to save people. So you guys can do what you must without worrying about me. They both just looked at each other in surprise not expecting me to understand. It appears that to them, I'm just book smart and not socially smart. Which I can understand, since I'm just three years old. Although reluctantly, 
they said their goodbyes as they went back to work in their office, which Oscorp has provided them. They continue coming and going until I was four years old when they came almost practically rushing through the front door of Uncle Ben's house. It was the middle of the night and I was watching everything from on top of the stairs, hidden so they wouldn't spot me. Ben please take care of Peter, okay? I'm sure he'll understand when he's older he's a bright boy after all said Dad with a hand on Ben's shoulder. Are you kidding me Richard, the boy's only four. You're practically abandoning him. Uncle Ben softly yelled to not wake me up, but it's too late as I was watching everything. Ben we have no choice, if we stay here and stay close to Peter they will get to him and use him against us. I don't want my boy to live a life of a hostage his whole life. We have no choice but to go into hiding. Uncle Ben was practically fuming at this point while Aunt May was at his side trying to calm him down the hell you mean you don't have a choice, there is always a choice. You could go to the police if they are threatening you. Mom with tears in her eyes stood between them we wish it was that simple, but we are against people that are above the law, they would do everything in their power to make sure we suffer. And so you guys don't get involved, we have to leave. Uncle Ben just stood there staring into their eyes and all he saw was their helplessness. While sighing he asked all right. But what about Peter, aren't you at least going to say goodbye? They both hung their head low in shame until Dad spoke up we wish we could but I believe if we see him it'll be impossible for us to say goodbye to him. Mary not wanting to hear this anymore grabbed her luggage that were already packed and started leaving while saying with tears running down her face I'm sorry but we have a plane to catch. The world around me froze for a few seconds a plane to catch? They're going to die. I have to save them how, how, how? My legs moved on their own and started sprinting down the stairs. When I reached them my hands were on their luggage stopping them from leaving. While practically screaming through my sobs please don't leave, you're going to die, if you leave I am never going to see you guys again. Please don't go. I have a bad feeling about this. You're going to die. Pity, they're looking at me with pity. I'm trying to save them and they just look at me with pity. Mom just crouched down and got on her knees which was followed by my father. They both wrapped their arms around me and started crying while repeating the phrase we're sorry like a broken record. I just stood there on my knees watching them leave with their luggage at hand and not daring to look back. That was the very last time I saw the ones I call mother and father in this life, and I never felt more powerless since, or so I thought. Chapter 3 Third Person's POV It's been three years since Peter's parents were reported dead from a plane crash. Peter was seen doing push UPS with one hand and a book laying flat on the ground. Peter's face was all serious when exercising and learning. Once he made sure that his body could handle it, Peter has started to push his body to the limit. When he first started, it worried both Aunt May and Uncle Ben, but they had to reluctantly accept what he was doing. To them it looked like a little kid coping with the loss of his parents. Even though Peter's body was small, muscles already started to form, from the two years of exercise. Most of Peter's routine would be that after each number of push-up or whatever he was doing, he would flip a page making it hard for him to concentrate on two things at once. But thanks to that multitasking has started to become a technique he started teaching himself. 97, 98, 99 and 100 with one final push Peter finished his workout. He then closed the book and let out a sigh. I finally finish all of my college courses, it's going to be hard to find more advanced books. But I guess I can mostly focus on my hands on experiments but it's going to be hard to get parts. Nothing a little OL dumpster diving can't fix. Peter picks up the book from the floor and puts it on his bed. He then goes and takes a shower when he realized he's all sweaty. When he finished and got dressed he went downstairs where he found Aunt May and Uncle Ben relaxing on their day off. Morning. They both turned and smiled towards Peter and said good morning Peter. Ever since his parent have been reported dead, they have taken care of Peter with unconditional love and support. They treat him like he is their own son and he couldn't have asked to be placed in a better family. Peter sat down and joined them for breakfast as he started eating he turned towards Uncle Ben and asked can you take me to the library again please. Uncle Ben just raised an eyebrow at that what happened to all the books we took out last week. Peter just shrugged his shoulder they were easy to read I just finished reading the last book. Aunt May just looked at Peter in shock Peter honey, they were college level books. I know you are a bright boy but you can't expect me to believe you finished those as well. Peter let out a sigh before saying in a serious tone Aunt May, I believe it's time I tell you a secret I've been keeping from you and Uncle Ben. Peter pauses letting the mood of the room turn heavy. They waited with bated breaths awaiting for whatever Peter is going to tell them. I. Peter paused once again making Uncle Ben impatient and worry well boy out with it, 
what is it? I'm. Yes. Both Aunt May and Uncle Ben say still waiting. I'm, too smart for my own good. What am I going to do now, everything I read just comes too easily for me Peter said with a clearly fake anxious expression. Uncle Ben seeing this starts laughing his ass off, while slamming his hand on the table. Aunt May seeing his little theatrics scoffs before playfully smacking him on the head don't scare me like that, you little jokester. Peter then started laughing as well with Uncle Ben. And they resumed back to eating. While eating Uncle Ben ruffles Peter's head as he said. If you truly need new books I'll take you to the library in the afternoon, how does that sound? Peter just happily nodded sure and thank you Uncle Ben. Aunt May just shook her head before remembering something. Make sure not to take too long, I heard there's new neighbors moving in across the street and I want all of us to be here when it happens so we could introduce ourselves. Peter although confused nodded his head but stopped halfway through it couldn't be, could it? I'll try Aunt May but I don't know if I could find what I'm looking for quickly but I'll try to. Aunt May just sighed before ruffling his hair as well at least you'll try. I guess I can't ask for anything else. And that's how most mornings started at the Parker residence. In the afternoon Peter is seen in the library trying to find any book he hasn't read, after searching for a while he finds a book about biology he hasn't read yet. When he goes and reaches for the book another hand reaches out for it making both of them take a hold of the book at the same time. Seeing another hand on the book they chose they turned and looked at each other. They both raised an eyebrow at each other when they noticed each other ages and at the same time asked each other. Can you even understand this? Can you even understand this? As soon as they both spoke at the same time and said the same word they stood stunned for a minute before looking offended. And once again they both spoke at the same time. Of course I understand this, I wouldn't have picked it up if I didn't. Of course I understand this, I wouldn't have picked it up if I didn't. They both stood stunned once again at the ridiculousness of the situation before they both bursted out laughing. They both then heard the librarian reprimand them for making too much noise shhhhhhhh. Quiet in the library. Which caused them both to cover their mouth to stop themselves from laughing any further. Peter then decided to introduce himself in a low voice while stretching out a hand. Hey, I'm Peter Parker, what's your name? The little girl in front of him then shook his hand as she introduced herself as well. Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Pleasure to meet you. Chapter 4 Third Person's POV Peter's brain almost blue-screened but luckily he caught himself just in time and just flashes a friendly smile Pleasure's all mine. They both then realized they still had their hand on the book, which caused them to quickly narrow their eyes. So are you going to let go? asked Gwen. And why should I do that when I finally found a book I haven't read yet? Of course you haven't read it, I doubt you read many books. The ABCs are that way if you want to start reading something said Gwen pointing towards the little kids section. Peter just smirked it seems that you're into fantasies, if you actually believe you understand this. The fantasy section is that way, don't forget to get someone to read it to you when you're about to go to sleep. Gwen just smirked back when they started teasing each other. They maintain eye contact for a while and just smiled at each other. While still looking at each other Peter breaks the silence we're going to be great friends aren't we? Gwen while still smiling nods her head. It's the first time she met someone just like her that can joke with her even though it's their first time meeting. I'm still not letting go of this book said Gwen before Peter decided to let go of the book with a shrug of his shoulder. Sure I'll let you have it for now, but you have to lend it to me later on. In the meantime I could work on something else. Gwen hearing this got interested oh and what are you working on? I'm building a computer from scratch. I'm just missing a few parts but they're easy to find and once I'm done I can start on my other projects. Gwen just look at Peter in amazement as he goes and starts looking through books related towards computers and coding. Can I come and watch? Excuse me. Peter asked confused, they literally just met wouldn't it be weird? Bit after some thinking Peter just shrugged his shoulder you can come if you want to but you're going to have to ask your dad or mom, or whoever you came with. Gwen just nodded and was about to go and asked but stopped and quickly grabbed Peter's hand dragging him with her. While walking towards her father Gwen curious asked so to what elementary do you go to? I go to percent and at asterisk dollar elementary, how about you? Gwen stops in her tracks and looks at Peter in surprise no way. I go there as well, I'm in class C, what about you? Class B. Gwen nodded remembering the class and resumed her power walk towards her dad. George Stacy was sitting on a desk waiting for his little girl to finish looking for whatever she was looking for. Since it was his day off, he decided to grant his daughter's wishes and take her to the library. While waiting for her, 
he saw her come closer while holding the hand of a little brown hair boy with glasses. Seeing them together infuriated him who does this punk think he is holding hands with my pumpkin. Seeing them approaching George crosses his arms to appear more intimidating and wait for them. When they arrived in front of him instead of being intimated Peter just puts two finger by his forehead and did the casual Meliodas greeting yo. This punk thought George. With his arms still crossed George asked in a low intimidating voice Gwendolyn who's this? Peter just covers his mouth and turns his head to snicker phttt Gwendolyn. Gwen's face then grew red and kicked both Peter and George in the shins. While Peter was hopping around holding his leg in pain, Gwen started to reprimand her dad Daddy we talked about you using my name in public, shorten it down to Gwen at least. George holding back the pain in his voice, holds his shins as he says yes princess. After massaging his shins to make the pain go away he turns to Gwen and asks so who's he? Oh right, Daddy meet Peter and Peter meet Daddy. Peter held out his hand and officially introduced himself Peter Parker, sir. George seeing his manners nods his head as he shook his hand George Stacy, pleasure to meet you. Pleasures all minds Mr. Stacy. George then turns to Gwen and asks so what is it princess? Can I go over Peter's house tomorrow? He's building a computer and I want to see him do it asked Gwen clearly excited. George just looks at Peter with a raised eyebrow what does she mean you're building a computer? Isn't that a little too complex for a kid your age? Peter just nodded yes, yes it is. But I like taking things apart and making new things with them. I already have everything I need, the wiring, the circuit board, the cooling system so it doesn't overheat, the screen I would use, I'm just missing a few things but I can find them basically everywhere. And it's with my uncle's supervision, so you don't have anything to worry about sir. This kid actually sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Is he like one of those rare geniuses? After some thinking, he asked let me meet this uncle of yours. Peter just nodded. He went and called Uncle Ben. When Ben arrived he was pretty excited to meet them, something which George picked up. If you don't mind me asking, why do you seem so excited to invite us? Uncle Ben then got embarrassed and while rubbing the back of his head shyly admits why, while patting Peter's head well you see, my boy isn't what I call great at making friends with kids his age. Due to his intellect he has trouble making friends and finds it hard to relate with them. So seeing him actively invite a friend has gotten me too happy. Sorry. With a smile George just shakes his head there's nothing to be sorry about, I totally understand. My daughter is the same way, it's nice to see her be excited to be hanging out with a kid her age. George then slightly whispered though it would have been better if it was a girl. Excuse me. Asked Ben not hearing him. George just shook his head it's nothing to worry about, but I hope you can let me supervise what they're doing after all it's pretty dangerous. Ben just nodded with a smile I wouldn't have had it any other way, so tomorrow. George just nodded his head tomorrow. Peter just sighed when he heard them finished discussing their plans while Gwen was pumping her fist in excitement. Peter then turned towards Gwen and said well I'll see you tomorrow. You have the only book I haven't read it and I need to find the missing parts since you're coming tomorrow. Bye. Gwen just waved her hand and with a smile just said her goodbyes as well. Peter approached Uncle Ben and said we can leave. They don't have anything I need and I already read everything I needed here. Uncle Ben nodded and left with a smile. It looks like he was worried about me making friends it seems. Sigh sorry Uncle Ben but I just can't seem to relate to any of them Peter thought while looking at how happy he got. And with that Peter left the library meeting an unexpected encounter. Chapter 5 Third Person's POV Aunt May was surprised when she saw that they returned earlier than expected. Uncle Ben then started to fill her in on what happened and how Peter invited a friend over tomorrow. Aunt May started to get excited as well and took Uncle Ben to go shopping with her so she could start making all kinds of food for tomorrow. Seeing May so happy left Peter in deep thought do I really worry them that much? I literally just invited someone over. They don't need to be this excited Peter mumbled. Seeing that, they would be away for a while, Peter snuck out of the house and got on a bike that Uncle Ben has gotten him for his birthday. Peter started going through the garbage of buildings that had a lot of machinery in store. He would go in the back and take apart the things people threw away and kept the parts he needed. He would put them on his backpack that he brought and search for more. He then looked at the time and realized that Uncle Ben and Aunt May would be home any minute now, so he started pedaling really fast making it home just in time. Sneaking in, he threw everything he collected in his room and went and washed his hands. After a few minutes Uncle Ben and Aunt May returned with bags of groceries. We're back! Yelled Uncle Ben as he entered. When they returned, Aunt May went straight to baking but it wasn't for tomorrow, 
it was for the neighbors that were moving across the streets. Peter. Do you want to help me bake a pie for the neighbors that are moving across the streets? Peter just shrugged no harm in helping I guess sure why not. He yelled from his room and came down to help Aunt May. It took close to an hour but thankfully everything came out great. When she was finished with everything May took a hold of both Peter and Ben and dragged them across the street and in front of the neighbor's house. Which you can tell were still settling in. They had boxes outside arranged to be moved inside. Aunt May went with a pie in hand and knocked on the door. Out came a woman with short red hair and two girls peeking behind her. One of the girls was slightly older than Peter while the other one was the same age. They all then started to introduce themselves, Peter did his usual two-finger greeting yo. Name's Peter Parker, what's yours Peter asked the girl the same age as him. The girl shyly nodded at his introduction and said Mary Jane Watson but people call me MJ. Seriously, is this like an intervention, first Gwen, and now MJ. Please be Black Cat next, I don't know what higher existence is out there but please let it be Black Cat. Well it was nice meeting you MJ said Peter while thinking about who else he could possibly meet. It was nice meeting you as well said MJ shyly. Aunt May then handed them the pie, which they took with gratitude and after their introduction they said their goodbyes. They seem nice said May as they made their way to their house. Everyone seems nice to you, Aunt May said Peter. Uncle Ben just chuckled at that. When they arrived Peter went to his room and started to organize everything and taking them to the basement, where he keeps all of his tool and devices. Some things in there aren't meant to be revealed so he keeps them hidden in a floorboard underneath the basement. Peter already started making gadgets towards when he would become Spider-Man. He already has made a homemade webs hooter and is now experimenting on different chemical formulas on how to make different webs. Some that are sturdier, some that dissolve easier, some that are much more stickier than others, and some that can conduct electricity better. Peter started hiding things that he doesn't need and taking out things he would need for tomorrow. After all can't have a police officer finding things that can easily blow up in the hands of a kid. The next day soon arrived and it was time for Peter to go to school. When he arrived in the classroom the teacher started making an announcement. Today class we have a new student joining us, why don't you come in and introduce yourself? MJ then entered the classroom and stood in front. Although slightly nervous she introduced herself hello everyone. My name is Mary Jane Watson but you can just call me MJ. After her introduction, the teacher made MJ sit on the only empty seat. The one next to Peter. As soon as she sat down Peter turned towards her and said well, 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 it looks like we're destined to be neighbors no matter where we go. Which caused her to start giggling. And that's how they spent most of the day until lunchtime, during lunchtime Peter managed to find Gwen reading her book. Peter just sneaked his way behind her and asked what are you reading. Causing Gwen to jump up in fright my god, you almost gave me a heart attack. Peter just chuckled sorry couldn't help it. So what are you reading? She showed Peter the cover of the book, it was the book which caused them to meet. I see, anything you find interesting. Gwen then got excited and started talking about all the different things she learned and how she thinks she can help a lot of people with this knowledge. Peter just nodded and said his peace and understanding of it making Gwen happy. To her she found a kindred spirit, who shares the same interests as her and actually understands what she's talking about. They went on to talk about different topics of biology and their development etc all the way through lunchtime. Gwen although dejected that lunch ended said her farewells I'll see you later at your house. Peter just nodded and went to class as well. Chapter 6 Third Person's POV When school ended Peter found Gwen waiting outside for him with her father in his cop car. When he approached George lowered his car window and said get in kid, I talked to your uncle, I told him I would pick you up and bring the both of you to their house. Peter just bowed his head slightly thank you Mr. Stacy. George just waved him off don't worry about it kid and just get in. Peter nodded and was pulled inside by Gwen. While they were making their way towards Peter's house Gwen asked so did you get everything you needed? Peter nodded yeah I got everything, I just need to assemble it all together. You can help if you want it's not that hard. Gwen with shining eyes turned towards Peter and excitedly asked really. Peter just nodded yeah I'll be sure to guide and help you when putting it all together. Gwen just grew more excited with every passing second. When they arrived Peter knocked to warn them that they got visitors, I'm home Peter yelled out. I'm in the kitchen honey yelled Aunt May back. Uncle Ben who was nearby welcomed both of them inside. He shook George's hand and thanked him for bringing Peter. Aunt May then appeared and introduced herself, which was followed by George and Gwen to introduce themselves as well. 
Peter then took a hold of Gwen's hand and led her to the basement, with George and Ben following close behind him. George and Gwen were shocked when they saw Peter's station, they were electrical parts everywhere with tools all over the place of different kinds. Peter turned towards Gwen and asked let's get started shall we? Gwen nodded with a determined expression and put her bag down and rolled up her sleeves. Peter brought out a giant case and laid it flat on the table. Peter then pulled different parts of a computer and showed it to Gwen and introduced what they do. Like a motherboard, a CPU, different wirings, a circuit breaker, a cooling system. Peter instructed Gwen into putting everything where it goes and in what position to put everything. When they were finished Peter went and got two screws and bolts and handed one to Gwen, they both started to close the casing, completely finishing the actual computer, now it was time for the monitor. Peter turned towards Ben and George who were watching everything in amazement and asked them Uncle Ben can you bring out the old TV that we don't use anymore and can you help him out please Mr. Stacy. They both nodded as George followed Ben. They both then soon came down carrying an old box TV and put it in front of them. Peter with the help of Ben and George started taking apart the TV. When everything was taken apart Peter started turning it into a computer monitor. Luckily during one of his old dumpster diving adventures Peter found a keyboard and a mouse. Although they were broken at the time Peter took his time fixing them just for this exact moment. Peter and Gwen then started to connect everything together, the PC, the monitor, the keyboard, the mouse. Everything looked like it was brand new. Peter just looked at it with pride. He grabbed the cord and connected it to the outlet hit the power button Gwen. Gwen hit the power button and waited with anticipation, the only sound that could be heard in the entire basement was the sound of the computer charging itself up. Everyone awaited with bated breaths. The monitor screen then lit up and a loading screen appeared. Seeing the loading screen appeared Gwen jumped up in excitement. They did it, they built a computer from scratch. Just the thought alone is mind-boggling for George, a kid no older than seven built something so high-tech with just scraps you can find anywhere. Gwen went and enveloped Peter in a hug due to their success. George wanted to get mad at that but he couldn't, what Peter did truly impressed him. Both Peter and Gwen went and started doing whatever they could in the computer whether it was searching up questions Gwen had about biology or where's the closest sites with disposed technology. While they were both busy with the computer Aunt May called them up lunch is ready. Come and eat while it's still warm. Peter and Gwen stopped what they were doing and went upstairs alongside Uncle Ben and George. They sat down and started eating, Uncle Ben then started happily explaining what just occurred to Aunt May. Gwen wanting to spend more time with Peter asked her father can Peter come over to our house later on. George just smiled and patted her head, he looked at Uncle Ben and Aunt May for confirmation, to which they nodded their head expressing their permission. Sure honey said George. After they finished, both Peter and Gwen went back downstairs and started researching different kinds of information. While researching they started to share their interests. Hmm, I like martial arts. I'm going to ask Uncle Ben if he can sign me up for classes. I prefer dancing, it's a nice feeling being able to express myself with moves. Did you know there's martial arts with dancing mix into it? This grabbed Gwen's attention really. Yeah the one I'm talking about even have many acrobatics moves. So you need to be really flexible to do it. Dancing and gymnastics were one of the few things Gwen really enjoyed. So hearing there's a martial art dedicated towards them really caught her interest. What's it called? Peter just went on the computer and searched up capoeira and showed her all the different types of moves. Gwen just looked at everything in fascination. Do you think my dad would let me go to some of their classes if I ask? Peter just shrugged his shoulder you'll never know until you ask. Gwen nodded with a determined expression and just like that they spent the rest of their day looking up everything they could think of. Chapter 7 Third Person's POV And just like that the years passed by like nothing. For the most part, in order to gain money Peter has become a handyman of sorts for their neighborhood, anytime someone needs something fixed they know that Peter is the one to call. Making him richer by each repair, thanks to the extra funds Peter was able to take mixed martial arts classes. Although Aunt May and Uncle Ben were reluctant at first, they finally decided to allow it when Peter kept pleading to them. With the leftover funds Peter was able to buy more equipment upgrading his computer's storage and processing power. His computer is so advanced that it wasn't anything like anyone has seen before. His inventions were ahead of the time's current technology. Now about his relationships, Peter and Gwen have become almost inseparable. They were always seen together enjoying their time with one another. Their little group expanded when MJ joined them in middle school and they grew closer, MJ even got into the habit of calling Peter Tiger. When they started hanging out more Harry Osborne soon joined the group. 
Although Peter was a little apprehensive at first due to what he knew, he came to still view Harry as one of his closest friends. It turns out that this Harry wants to be an environmentalist just like his mother and wants to heal the planet. Unfortunately Harry's mother soon passed away due to her hereditary disease. It truly was a sad day for Harry, luckily he had his friends with him. Peter, Gwen and MJ went and expressed their condolences and support to show that they were there with him. Peter and the rest of his friends were now 12 years old, five years has passed since they all started to become closer. Peter can be seen riding his bike with Gwen by his side, they are making their way towards Harry's house to have a meeting with his father. They both arrived and knocked on the door, to which a butler answered the door. Good afternoon Mr. Parker, Miss Stacy how can I be of any services to you today? Yo Sebastian. Is Mr. Osborne here today? We have something we want to talk to him about said Peter. Gwen just greeted the butler good afternoon Sebastian. Sebastian just nodded as he replied the master is in his office working currently. Peter nodded and asked can we talk to him, it's business related. Sebastian just nodded once more and went to inform his master. After a few minutes Sebastian comes and says follow me. Peter and Gwen look at each other before following him to Norman's office. Once inside Peter reaches for his bag and presents his research and findings to Norman. Norman looks at it with a raised brow as he starts examining the paper, after a while Norman looks impressed this is genius. And you're telling me the two of you worked together to create this. Peter and Gwen just nodded their head seriously we developed these antibiotics with the sole purpose of eliminating anything that's not beneficial towards the human body, we found a way for them to last longer inside the body without it being harmful and we were wondering if you can patent it explained Peter. Our search paper on everything we discovered is also in there and we were wondering if you would be willing to publish them. Since you know what to do and how to get it done said Gwen. We also discovered new antibodies we could use, compared to the 15 available, we discovered that there are 63 different types. Everything we discovered and learned is in there said Peter. Norman then put on a pondering expression $500,000 annually for the both of you. This could save many lives, thank you for bringing this to me and entrusting me with your important research. I'll make sure to spread your names and showcase what you two have accomplished. Both Peter and Gwen went wide eye when they heard that number, they both just looked at each other with their mouths wide opened. Norman just chuckled seeing their expression. How would the two of you come work for me when you're old enough to intern? Hearing this Peter put on a pondering expression this could be good. I'll be able to make money and I would be able to keep a close eye on potential future villains. Most of them come from Oscorp themselves, but I can't forget the worst villain of them all. Even though I'm acting all nice. This man is the one responsible for killing my parents. I don't blame Harry or even possess an ounce of hatred towards him, the sins of a father shouldn't be passed down towards the son. No my hatred is towards Norman, but no one needs to know that. So I'll just play the nice kid card, plus he can be of use. His money is important so while he works his ass off, I could let's say potentially extort his money slowly. But not by a lot after all I wouldn't want Harry to suffer because of my actions, that would be immature of me. Thought Peter. Before Gwen could happily accept his proposal Peter intervene could you give us time to think about it, this is a very important discussion after all, it's about our future. Norman nodded happily with a smile while looking towards them. Wait where can I send you your paychecks asked Norman I doubt you kids have bank accounts. We thought about that actually, we have custodial accounts that's managed by my uncle and Gwen's father explained Peter. Norman then pulled out two legal documents about patents and their pay to which Gwen and Peter looked over. Once seeing that everything is agreeable, they both signed the papers. Peter and Gwen then gave him their bank information to which Norman used and sent $500,000 towards each account. With Uncle Ben, he soon received a message on his phone. He looked at the phone and spit out the coffee he drinking startling May. PHTTTTTTT did they rob a bank or something what the hell did those kids do? May at this point was freaked out what? What happened? Why are you so shocked? With shaky hands Uncle Ben shows the message he received to May. May almost fainted on the spot when she saw it. With shaky hands she covers her face as tears comes coming down her face he's a criminal, the boy I raised with love has become a criminal. George was lazily reading a newspaper when suddenly he received a message on his phone, when he saw the numbers, he counted to make sure he wasn't seeing things. He lost count on how many times he recounted those zeros. George just put his phone down and resume reading. I'll wake up eventually. What a weird dream this is. George said out loud. Chapter 8 Third Person's POV 
Both Peter and Gwen got onto their bikes and rode them until they made it into an abandoned subway station. They got off their bikes and slowly started walking inside the tunnel. After walking by the railroad for a few minutes, they pushed the side of a supposed wall. The wall started glitching for a few seconds as it turned into a door, as they entered everything around them started to turn on, from the lights on the walls to the computer monitor displayed on the wall. To the back side of the room the place was filled with computer operating systems, making the tech they own highly advanced. Gwen just went and took out a book from her bookshelf she has, while Peter sat on the chair in front of the computer monitors, to which he started typing away. After an hour, Peter started getting really excited and started typing away even faster. He even stood up from where he was sitting down and started to really concentrate. Seeing Peter standing up and really going at it, Gwen stopped what she was doing and got closer. She saw letters and different types of coding algorithms flashing from monitors to monitors. Peter then suddenly stopped and put his hands in the air and sat back down. I did it he faintly whispered after five whole years I finally did it he continues. Once Peter sat down Gwen sits on his lap, once she sat down she asked questioningly just what is it that you have been working on for all these years. You wouldn't even tell me what you have been working on no matter how many times I ask you. Peter wrapped his arms around Gwen my greatest creation. This, this is literally my child I just created. Pete you are starting to freak me out. Just what is it that you created? Asked Gwen anxiously. Give me your hand. I want us to activate it at the same time said Peter as he grabbed Gwen's hand and wrapped his finger around hers. Peter then extended his index finger making Gwen align hers with his. Peter carefully and slowly guided their hand and pushed the enter button at the same time. A loading screen soon appeared with a loading bar slowly filling itself up. It kept filling up until it reached 99%, typical thought Peter. After a few seconds the 99% reached 100%. When it did a spider logo started appearing throughout every single monitor. When Gwen saw this she just sighed before saying we really need to get that brain of yours checked out, what is up with you and spiders? Don't get me wrong the logo is cool and all but does it have to go on everything? I wouldn't even be surprised if the underwear you have on has a spider logo. My obsession with spiders isn't that bad and it's not on everything Peter said defending his case. A voice of an emotionless woman was soon heard a.rac.h.n.i.d is now online and is ready to serve. Gwen just turned her head and gave Peter an unamused expression. Peter's face turned red and just looked away. Clears throat. In my defense, I thought of the name first before making the logo so you can't blame me with that one. Peter said defending himself. I get that arachnid is an abbreviation but what does it stand for? The name Arachnid soon appeared on the monitor in front of them showing the letters going down and started showing Gwen what it stood for. A Udo. A Responsive. A Artificial. C Computer. A Choosing. N At Work. I Information. D Advice. Gwen just looked at Peter you couldn't come up with something shorter. Oi. Don't be making fun of my child now Peter said trying to protect Arachnid's feelings not that it had any, for now. Peter patted Gwen telling her to get up, which she did. Peter reached over the keyboard and started typing away once again. Arachnid, run a system check and check for any mistakes. Affirmative. Running system check now. Peter waited for a few minutes with bated breath. Everything seems to be in order. Father. Although the system process is slow it's still operational. As soon as Peter heard that he started laughing like a mad scientist. Ha 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 ha. It's alive, it's alive I tell you. While Peter was feeling the all-time high, he was quickly brought down from it with a smack to the back of the head by Gwen. Stop acting crazy. Peter just rubbed the back of his head all embarrassed sorry. But look Gwyneth I did it. I made it. The greatest AI to ever live. Who cares if Tony Stark has one as well mine's definitely 100 times better. Isn't that right Arnie? Arnie. Yup, arachnid is too long and a mouthful. Arachnid can be its full name and Arnie can be its nickname. Then why name it Arachnid? Asked Gwen. Cause it's cool day. Why else? And it fits the theme Peter then started to fake cry and start hugging the operating system in the back. Ever since I built that computer together with you Gwen, I just knew I had to make an AI, five years and countless nights without sleep and I finally did it. I never felt happier. Gwen just scoffed while crossing her arms why don't you just marry it then? Since you love it so much Gwen at this point can't believe she's getting jealous of a computer. Even with all these intimate actions, he still won't put a name on our relationship. 
Just why won't he ask me out already Gwen thought while watching Peter almost start making out with the computer. Come on Gwen you know I can't do that, she's my daughter said Peter while still hugging it. So are you saying if it wasn't you totally would? There was a long pause before Peter replied while turning his head no comment. So what does this AI do exactly? I get the gist of it but I want to know its important functions asked Gwen even though they were just bantering earlier, she is very impressed and intrigued at what Peter created. One of its main and most important functions is its self-learning system. You don't have to worry about it going against us since it views me as its father slash creator. It has our best interests at heart, it has access to the whole world's internet. The more I upgrade this baby the better it'll be. It can come up with its own ideas, hack into nearby devices, search for information in a nanosecond, and so much more Peter explained excited about his creation. With this our research is going to become so much easier and our lives are going to become so much better. I just know it said Peter. Peter then sat back down and continued typing away at his computer until late in the afternoon. Chapter 9 Peter's POV After I finish setting everything up I look at the phone I made in my hands and asked out loud how is it Ernie? Can you have access to my phone? A spider logo then appeared on the screen and the voice of Arnie was soon heard I still have access to my main functions and I'm fully operational. I'm always ready to serve. I nodded at that, that's good. I then realized what time it was shit, Gwen it's late we have to go home unfortunately. I also added Arnie to your phone, your position to her is second only to me. So she will see you as someone very important. Gwen stopped what she was doing and checked the time you're right, dad is gonna kill us if we get home this late. Hat. I can already imagine him freaking out over the money we earned. Hearing this I immediately started freaking out uh oh. Gwen looks at me with concern what do you mean uh oh. We got too excited about the money and our discovery that we forgot to tell them. When they get the notification of the unexpected and unexplained amount of money they're going to be freaking out. Gwen eyes went wide in shock shit. Shit, indeed. We both just looked at each other before grabbing what we came with and running out of the hideout. We both got on our bikes and quickly pedal ourselves out of there. While escorting Gwen home I took out my phone and commanded my brand new AI Arnie put the hideout in disguise mode. I didn't even doubt it, that it did what I told it. After all I made it, the lights and everything else should be powered down, the light base projection should be covering everything. We quickly arrived in front of Gwen's house. She came and kissed me on the cheeks which just made me blush. She then ran inside probably embarrassed or probably so her father doesn't freak out. I would never know. When I saw she made it inside I started pedaling away and made my way towards Aunt May and Uncle Ben. While I was riding my bike I thought about the kiss. Am I weird for liking it, we're both 12 so it shouldn't be weird. But I'm mentally older, God I can of course tell she likes me. I'm not that dense that I couldn't tell she has feelings for me. But I'm hesitant because of my mental age. Hope there isn't an interdimensional FBI that goes after reincarnators. But seriously what am I going to do, my feelings for her are developing as well, my mental age shouldn't matter. This is a new life for me, I am now Peter Parker a 12 year old boy from Queens, and the future neighborhood Spider-Man. I feel like I'm overcomplicating things that I shouldn't. While I was deep in thought I soon realized that I made it home rather quickly. Nervously I made my way inside and it's just as I feared, they were overreacting. Aunt May was on her seat crying while Uncle Ben was just rubbing her back comforting her. Third person's POV. Peter just looked at everything with a weary smile and as soon as he entered he announced his presence I'm home. Peter what did you do? Where did all that money come from demanded Aunt May. I really got to remind Arnie to set up a secret bank account for future uses thought Peter as he sighed and took out his phone. He then pulled up his research and what he presented to Norman I went and sold my patent to Mr. Osborne. My ideas with Gwen were so great he bought everything for $1 million, giving 500000 to me and another 500000 to Gwen. That's not even the good news, the good news is that this is yearly. Due to how much these would sell Mr. Osborne thought that it was a reasonable price. So now every year Gwen and I would be receiving $500,000 yearly. So you guys don't really have to worry about money as much. I know how much you guys are having difficulty paying the bills, so I thought I would help you guys out and just invent something. And here we are. Silent tears just kept pouring down Aunt May's face, while Uncle Ben got up and pulled Peter into a tight hug. Our bills isn't something you should be worried about. A kid your age should just be worried about having fun and school. I want you to promise me something, I want you to promise to stop worrying about things an adult should be worried about and just have fun. But. 
Peter started protesting but Uncle Ben just cut him off. Promise me Peter Uncle Ben said. Peter just shook his head I'm sorry I can't promise you that, I could say that I promise but that would be lying to you. I'm always going to be worrying about you guys, plus who said I didn't have fun. I enjoyed my time researching different ideas with Gwen, it's just that these ideas make money Peter said the last part with a sly smirk. Sigh, you're right when you sometimes say that you're too smart for your own good, this is one of those instances. And just to be clear we're not touching that money, that money is going right into your college funds. Were you even listening to what I said previously, I'm going to get that amount of money annually. Which means even if you save the necessary funds, I'm still going to have a lot left over, so instead of it just collecting dust in the bank, it's better you use it and make all of our lives easier. You are one stubborn child, you know that. Uncle Ben said. Peter just gave him a large smile what can I say being stubborn is a Parker trait and a way of life. They both just started laughing at that. They all then sat down and started to really talk about their future and what they were going to do with that money. Peter had to really press them in order for them to use it. Although really reluctantly they agree, they only agree when Peter threatened them to withdraw all that money and burn it in front of them. They just continued discussing all the way onto the night, where they all had dinner and went to sleep. While in his room Peter was on his phone talking to Arnie. I want you to make an untraceable bank account. Make decoy ones so when money is transferred it couldn't be found where it went into. While Peter was giving further instructions to Arachnid he heard the sound of pebbles hitting against his window. With a sigh Peter got up and opened his window, slowly a figure started to climb up the side of the building and with the help of Peter managed to get inside. Peter just looked at her exasperated again. The figure just nodded with her head slightly down. Peter just sighed before patting her head MJ this is the third time this week that your dad has gotten violent when drunk. I'm seriously about to go there and do something myself. MJ just softly whispered can I stay the night. Peter just scoffed why are you even asking me. You know the answer to that is always yes. But I swear MJ, if I ever see you with a bruise. Peter didn't finish his sentence and let the threat hang in the air. MJ did understand the message though and just smile softly at Peter's concern. Peter just went back into bed, as MJ followed him and went to sleep while snuggling close to him. Peter just looked at her hugging him and silently sighed before going to bed as well. Chapter 10, Chapter 10 Third Person's POV The next morning. Peter woke up and helped MJ get down the window so she could go back towards her house. Peter just watched her get inside with a sigh. Peter then went and did his daily routine, his daily exercise with an increase of numbers his daily reads and overlooking everything with Arnie. When he was done he went and had breakfast with Uncle Ben and Aunt May. After they finished having breakfast, Peter went and got on his bike. He went across the street and knocked on MJ's house, it was her mother that answered. Good morning Mrs. Watson greeted Peter. Mrs. Watson just smiled and ruffled Peter's messy dark brown hair and a good morning to you Peter, just wait a few seconds MJ is almost done. Peter just nodded as Mrs. Watson just turned her head back inside and yelled out MJ it's Peter and he's here to pick you up. MJ's voice was soon heard as she replied coming down in ASEC. MRS. Watson just shook her head and head inside while Peter just waited. After a few minutes MJ came running out after saying her goodbyes and sat behind Peter on his bike. Peter then started riding his bike to school with MJ hugging him close behind. When they arrived Peter just went and locked up his bike as he went towards his friends. And that's how he spent the rest of his middle school years. The years came and went and Peter is now 14 years old and it has been a few months since he has started high school at Midtown High. Peter had a permission slip of a tour of Oscorp in his hand and every time he would look at it he would go into deep thoughts. It's finally here, the day I become Spider-Man. Shit I'm seriously getting cold feet, this, this is a big responsibility. Being Spider-Man isn't something I can take lightly. Can I even live up to what it takes to become him? is my conviction strong enough to see this through. Being Spider-Man isn't a job like most spider people say, it's a way of life. Once I put on the mask the lives of people are in my hands. Whether they're safe and well is all up to me. Do I seriously have what it takes to see it through, would I be able to save everyone? No that's a dumb question, I know I won't, it's just an impossible thing to do. The real question is if I have what it takes to face the consequences of being unable to. Why do I have to be a hero in the first place, what does it mean to me? Do I even have to be a hero, I could just take the powers and do as I please why would I waste away my life saving people I don't know? Peter thought while actually taking this seriously for the first time. 
All this time he's been saying he's Peter Parker the future Spider-Man, but now that it's come down to it, he has realized the gravity of the situation. While he was deep in thought he didn't notice all of his friends looking at him with worry. Do any of you have any idea what's going on with Peter this is the first time I seen such a look on him it's worrying Harry asked MJ and Gwen. They both just shook their head you're right this is worrying, Peter has always been someone so reliable, so seeing him like this and not being able to help is saddening said MJ while looking at Peter with concern. You're the one closest to him Gwen do you seriously have no idea what's going on asked Harry. Sigh, I wish I knew, it all started ever since we got the permission slip for Oscorp. Apart from that I don't know anything else. This is really frustrating said Gwen with an annoyed expression. Class quickly ended and Peter just started walking towards his bike and while he was deep in thought he didn't even pay attention to Flash Thompson who was throwing insults at him like usual. Hey penis Parker, catch Flash threw his football at the back of Peter's head and as it hit him even that didn't wake him up from his thoughts. He just went on his bike and rode away to have a deep talk with the only person that could maybe help. The person who is one of the reason why every Peter Parker becomes Spider-Man. Uncle Ben. When he got home he took a deep breath before entering. I'm home. He announced. He found Uncle Ben sitting by himself reading a newspaper while you're home early, why is that? Peter just sighed before saying I have something I really need to ask you and where is Aunt May? May is out grocery shopping and you know you can talk to me about anything. Peter just nodded before asking what would you do if you had the chance to save a lot of people but it comes with a lot of difficulties and a great amount of danger that could potentially put the ones you love in harm's way. Uncle Ben just put down what he was reading and looked at Peter with a raised brow, seeing the seriousness in his eyes Uncle Ben thought deeply about his answer. If it were up to me I would take the chance. Peter nothing in life comes without at least a little bit of difficulties, those difficulties is what helps us grow in life and help us become a better person. You only said potentially put them in harm's way, not that it would for certain, so if I had the power to save people I would do it since it would be my responsibility. After all with great power comes great responsibilities. Since I have the chance, I would use that chance to make sure my loved ones are safe and once I'm sure they are, I would save the people that really need it. How can you be so certain that everything would work out Peter asked with his head down. You don't. What? Peter asked looking up in surprise. You can never be certain. There are no certainties in life, it's all a leap of faith. Peter just chuckled at that a leap of faith hey. Peter softly exhaled expelling all of his worries and fear. And with a determined look he looked at Uncle Ben in his eyes I know what I have to do Uncle Ben, thank you. Uncle Ben just smiled anytime kiddo, anytime although Ben was curious what brought this on, he had a feeling it was better not to know and just leave it as it is. Peter then took out his permission slip and presented it to Uncle Ben can you please sign this. Uncle Ben just nodded and signed the slip while signing it he saw that it was for tomorrow. Why did you wait all this time to have me sign this. Peter just softly smiled at that I was still deciding on if I wanted to go or not. But then I decided to have a leap of faith. Uncle Ben just chuckled when Peter used his own words against him and finished signing it and handed it to Peter. Peter just took a hold of the paper and with a deep breath, he became even more determined. Chapter 11, Chapter 11 Third Person's POV The next day Peter was ready and determined for what's to come. Peter looked at himself in the mirror I wonder how different I would be after the bite, would I grow taller, be more muscular, would my face even change? I better save this picture in my head to do a before and after. Picture of Peter Parker With a sigh Peter got himself ready and made his way towards school. When he arrived he saw all the students getting ready and into the school bus. When the teacher saw Peter he asked do you have the permission slip. You know I can't let you on without it. Peter just nodded as he took it out and handed it to him. The teacher looked at it for a few seconds before nodding his head and signing Peter to get in. Peter sighed before getting in, he looked around and saw an empty seat next to Gwen. When he sat down Gwen just looked at him with worry she put a hand on his arms and asked. Peter are you alright, we've been worried about you. You have been acting weird these past few days. Peter just gave her a reassuring smile I'm fine now, you know the usual typical teenager stuff, almost went through a midlife crisis. But nothing a good old talk with Uncle Ben can't fix. Gwen continued to look at Peter with a worried look. Peter seeing this just softly smiled at her concern. He went and kissed her on the cheeks, which completely caught her off guard and caused her to blush. Gwen while holding her cheek asked while blushing what was that for. Peter shrugging his shoulders replied with I don't know, just felt like it. Flash who saw what just happened smirked before shouting out loud no way, P 
Penis Parker has a girlfriend, he just kissed Gwen Stacy. What never seen two people kiss before Flash, your mom and dad probably don't love each other then Peter replied. Hey. What was that you fucker said Flash enraged about Peter's response. However before Flash could do anything else the teacher got on the bus and calmed down all of them all right, all right, that's enough. In your seats everyone and buckle up. Everyone did as he said and with that the bus started moving and made its way towards Oscorp. When they arrived they were told to stand in line while the tour guide comes and shows them around. A black hair woman of Asian descent came with a clipboard and introduced herself. Good afternoon students today I'll be your tour guide, my name is Cindy Moon, and I hope you enjoy your time with us. While Cindy Moon was showcasing all of the research going around, Peter looked at everything carefully. Due to this he didn't notice Gwen looking over him with worry. Ms. Moon then brought them over a close door and said in these room is an exhibits for spiders, we aren't allowed to go in due to the danger but we are allowed to look from out here through the glass. Everyone just looked at everything mildly impressed but to them it wasn't anything interesting. Now come and follow along onto our next project. This one is about lizards and their ability to regenerate and grow back their limbs. While the rest of the class followed Peter stayed behind, once he saw everyone walk ahead he slowly walked backwards into the spider exhibit. What he didn't notice however was that he wasn't the only one that stayed behind, a figure who saw him stay behind decided to do the same to see what he was up to. Once he was inside he saw webs everywhere with spiders crawling all around. His eyes then landed on a specific spider and something just seems to call to him. This spider was different from the usual blue and red one that gave the original Peter Parker their powers. This one was red and black with blue lightning bolts going all around its eight legs. Something just seems to be calling Peter towards it. He couldn't help but instinctively move closer and closer to it. When he got at a arm's length, he stretched out his hand towards it. The spider without any hesitation just started climbing on his hand, probably feeling the same type of connection with Peter. After a while when the spider approached his wrist, it opened its mouth and plunged its fangs into Peter sending its venom inside his bloodstream. Peter didn't make a sound when it happened but he did hear a noise. Ouch smack! Peter quickly turned his head and saw the figure that followed him inside. Gwen? What are you doing here? What happened? Peter asked already getting an idea of what just happened. You were being suspicious and weird, then I saw you sneak away from the group so I followed you. And of course it had to be with spiders. Gwen then showed Peter what was in her hand. It was a spider, a white and pink spider to be exact with icy blue legs, its legs look like they were made out of ice. Peter just went into his pockets and took out two vials and quickly grabbed both spiders and put it inside them. The white spider was most likely dead, while the black one was trying to escape. In the vial Peter let a tiny hole so they could breathe but not escape. Peter was planning on catching one spider for testing but he didn't take into account Gwen getting bitten as well. After carefully putting the spiders away, both Gwen and Peter started getting dizzy at the same time. Peter I don't feel so good. Peter although dizzy took a hold of Gwen's hand and pulled her out from the exhibit. Yet I don't feel so great either. Are we going to die Gwen asked fearfully. I doubt it. We probably just need to sleep this off. Come one let's sneak away and go home or at least to our secret base. Gwen just nodded while tripping over her own two feet. Peter then took out his phone, Arnie corrupt the footage and make sure we aren't seen while walking home. Thanks to Arachnid's learning system, her speech patterns have become less robotic and more fluent. The past two years Arachnid spent her time learning all she could get her coated hands on. Yeah bring it we need it. Peter and Gwen then started to stealthily evade the personal and staff thanks to Arnie looking out for them. They both snuck out the back of the building without being detected and stumbling about. At the back there stood a white car with its doors open awaiting for them. It was a car Peter made with a self-driving system, that Arnie is able to control at any given moment. Peter helped Gwen get inside which he then went and got inside as well. The door to the car closed on its own, Peter just said take us to the hideout. The car as if listening to his commands started driving itself, while they were making their way to a safe location both Peter and Gwen kept coming and going out of consciousness. Which was followed by them heating up and start sweating everywhere. Are you sure we're alright Peter Gwen unexpectedly started to shiver and get really cold. Brrrr why is it so cold Gwen muttered with her breath being visible every time she talked and exhaled. While Peter was to the side twitching and spazzing about like he was being electrocuted. After a few minutes they both arrived at their hideout. When they get out of the car Peter almost face plants to the ground due to how much he was twitching and was unable to control his body. While Gwen was just hugging herself due to how cold she was. 
they slowly limped into their hideout and each laid down on their respective couch and just curled up into a ball. They spent the rest of the day twitching and shivering for who knows how long. Chapter 12, Chapter 12 Third Person's POV Slowly Peter and Gwen started to wake up, while blinking slowly they suddenly had their senses blast them with a warning causing them to instinctively jump and stick to the ceiling. Whoa they said at the same time. They then started to crawl on the ceiling while circling each other. They both extended a finger towards each other and as soon as they touched, they lost concentration causing both to start falling. While falling they tried to instinctively grab onto something, which caused a white string to come out of their wrist and stick itself on the ceiling. Once again instinctively they took a hold of it, stopping their momentum and stopping their fall. Organic webs bay by eye shouted Peter in his head. They both let go of the web and stood in front of each other. They both just look at the front and back side of their hands in awe. Gwen freaking out decided to joke about the situation hat, well look at that Peter, you love spiders so much we're practically turning into one, ha 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 Gwen laughed still freaking out and not knowing what to do. It's probably the spider bite that did this to us said Peter guiding Gwen's thinking onto a specific path. Gwen's eyes then grew wide in shock of course, the enhanced spider bite back in Oscorp. Do, do you think we're going to transform into actual spiders, you know grow eight legs and eyes and all that stuff? I mean we already have the web down. Gwen was flicking her wrist when mentioning the webs causing them to shoot out of her once again and went towards Peter at a fast speed. Peter just leaned backwards enough where the web went over his face hitting the wall behind him. Peter went back to how he was and looked at the wall behind him. On the wall a simple web design was made using Gwen's silk. Oops said Gwen as she grabbed onto her wrist to stop it from shooting any more webs. I wonder what other ability we got because of the bite Peter wonder out loud. He then turns around towards the couch and tries to pick it up with one hand. When he was successful in that endeavor he just casually said super strength, check. What? What do you mean check? Why are you so casual about it? Like it's something that's totally normal to do. Asked Gwen. Peter just looked at Gwen in confusion spiders can lift up to ten times their own weight, so I thought it was pretty obvious we were going to have super strength. We just have to find out what else we can do. Gwen hearing that there might be more things she has gained started to get rather excited instead of scared. Seeing how relaxed Peter was being about it, she unconsciously decided to not worry about it if Peter isn't worrying about it. Wanting to see what else she could do she goes and tries and exit the hideout but ends up taking the entire door off its hinges. Gwen just has an awkward look on her face as she has the door lifted off the ground with just one hand I guess I don't know my own strength sometimes she jokes. Peter just scoffed when it happened. He then went and grabbed a few things and exited the room with Gwen, he took a hold of the door and put it in the position it was before and blast the place where the hinges were with his webs, closing the door. He then turned towards Gwen we'll fix it later when we get control of our strength. In the meantime I know where we can test our strength and see if we have any other abilities. Peter guided Gwen to an abandoned warehouse he found a while back, he was waiting to get his spider powers, to officially move into a new base of operation, since he can't always spend it in an abandoned subway. While making their way, they would carefully maneuver around people to not accidentally hurt them with their new strength, totally forgetting about taking the car due to their excitement. After a few minutes they made it towards an abandoned warehouse away from people. Peter using his new strength forced his way in which was followed by Gwen following close behind him. When they made it inside Peter started to set up everything he brought along, from camera to scanners and other tools that could be useful. Do you want to test things first? Peter asked Gwen. Gwen nodded clearly excited. Peter went and grabbed a few steel beams that were laying about, and made Gwen hold them with her arms up. Peter then went and grabbed a scanner and started to wave it all around Gwen's body. When he was finished he asked so Arnie what do you think, oh and you can put them down now. Gwen nodded and did as she was told awaiting to hear what Arnie had to say. After overlooking at the way the muscle were shaped and compacted together, it's safe to say you did acquired super strength. Based on the muscle strain that occurred I can conclude that she picked up a total of one ton. Now how much more she can carry, based on just how much more her muscles can strain, it was calculated that she previously strained one tenth of her total strength. Meaning that at a total she can carry up to ten tons. Whoa. Holy shit I'm seriously strong now. I have to learn to quickly control it. Your turn now Peter, is yours the same amount or is it different? Peter just shrugged his shoulder only one way to find out Peter lifted his arms as Gwen started putting on the steel beams, once she was done she grabbed the scanner and repeated what Peter did to her. When she was done Peter put down the beams and asked so. How much can I lift Arnie? 
due to the male body having more muscle mass it's able to compact further and be able to handle a lot more strain compared to the female. Thus when lifting the beam only 1 15th of father's muscle were strained. Once again meaning that in total the amount you are able to carry is approximately 15 tons. However based on the scans I also notice the structure of the bones and their joints flexibility. Although father's bone are denser they aren't as flexible and thus due to the density would make him slower. Compared to Miss Stacy she is currently extremely flexible being able to move in positions she couldn't previously, due to how less dense her bones are I can conclude that her base speed is now faster than father's. That is not to say father isn't fast, at the moment I can't really calculate your top speed. So forgive me for not being able to produce accurate results at the moment. Don't worry Arnie you did more than enough Peter said, he then turned towards Gwen and gave her a mocking smug smile. Hear that I'm stronger than you. Gwen just teased him back yeah but I'm faster, you would have to catch me first in order to actually land a hit, slowpoke. With that they went and tried out numerous experiments and exercises. Chapter 13, Chapter 13 Third Person's POV Peter was swaying back and forth on a hammock he made using his webs. While Gwen sat on a swing she made using hers. Peter while swaying back and forth said okay let's go over this one more time. I can lift up to 15 tons. And I could lift up 10 replied Gwen. My top speed is 120 said Peter while Gwen continues after him. Mine is 150. We have a danger sense, that warns us of any threat. You can't forget about the organic webs that comes out of our wrist. We have insane stamina, even after moving around for an hour we didn't even get tired. Our durability is high but not to the point where we wouldn't get hurt in case of a serious injury. I still can't believe you climbed all the way up to the ceiling and dropped down just to test that, seriously Peter. Peter while holding up his index finger replied with it's all for science. You almost bursted into tears when you landed Gwen said in a monotone voice. Hey. We don't talk about that, that's in the past and forgotten. At least we discovered we have a healing factor and can't forget about the wall climbing. Yeah have you discovered what makes us stick to walls and stuff? Nope but if I had to make a guess I would say it has something to do with static electricity but it's up for debate honestly. That's pretty much all we have so far, the only thing we didn't repeat back is that we get hungry when he use a lot of webs, but that seems simple and logical. Peter just sighs when he hears that well that's pretty disappointing I thought we would have more Peter just closes his eyes and starts swaying. I mean I for real thought we would at least get a camouflage ability. That seems so spider like, I could already imagine it. I would start blending into the environment and slowly start disappearing. UMM Peter. Gwen calls out nervously. Peter just opened his eyes and looked at Gwen what? Which causes her to jolt a you're still here she said letting out a sigh of relief that's good. She then awkwardly points her finger towards him. You're not exactly visible. What? Peter asked and lifts his hands up. He saw right through them. Holy moly I could go invisible, that is so cool. Yeah. So how did you do it, maybe I could do it too Gwen asked wanting to turn invisible as well. I don't know, all I thought about was blending into my surroundings, I didn't think about disappearing I just thought to become one with everything around me Peter said explaining his thought process. Gwen shut her eyes tightly and started thinking about what Peter told her. After a few sec she peeked through one eye to see if it was working, she saw all of her fingers were gone but her hand and the rest of her body was still visible. Whoa, I have it as well although it seems I need to work on it though. Why did yours come so flawlessly compared to mine, that's not fair. You're trying too hard. What? You were trying to force it, you can't just force yourself to become invisible you have to do it in a relaxed manner, I said you have to blend into your environment, not force yourself to become one with it. Since when did you become such an expert on this, you literally just discovered it a few seconds ago. I guess I'm just better. Gwen just scoffed before softly closing her eyes and keeping a steady breathing. Peter saw how she slowly but surely started becoming invisible until she disappeared from his view. Peter while still invisible just smiled congratulations on joining the invisible club, I hope you enjoy your stay. There isn't much to look at but it's an enjoyable experience. Gwen scoffed once again undoing her invisibility. She then started hanging upside down from her swing. While swinging she asked with a serious expression. Hey Peter. Yet. Yeah. What do you think we should do with these powers? I feel like we should do something important with them but I'm honestly scared. Isn't it already obvious what we're going to do with them? Sai you're right, it is obvious. Peter and Gwen then spoke at the same time. We will be super villains. 
we will be superheroes. What said Gwen in shocked when she looked at Peter? Joking, joking. It's obvious we're going to be using our powers to help people. I mean it was obvious for you, your dad is literally the police chief. It would be concerning if you really went and became a villain. And I don't think the police chief's daughter would be dating me if my morals were questionable. Plus even with my powers I still think Uncle Ben would beat my ass if he ever found out I ended up doing evil when I have this gift. After all he would always tell me. Gwen smirked knowing where this was going having heard of his Uncle Ben's favorite saying. Gwen joined in and said it with Peter. With great power comes great responsibilities. Are you sure you ready to do this Gwen? This is a very big responsibility, going out there and fighting and protecting people isn't as easy as it sounds. We are going to be constantly putting our lives at risk and if we go out there we could be potentially putting the lives of others at risk as well. Gwen's expression then got serious normally this would be something I would be hesitant about if I was by myself. But I'm not alone, I have you don't I? I believe that having each other's back through all this we can make it work. I guess this is when the dream team is born. Now we have to come up with something very important, our hero names and costumes. Gwen just gives him a deadpan look really? That's what you believe is the most important. Hey, a reputation is really important how are people supposed to feel safe if we have crappy costumes with crappy names? Imagine putting your life at the hands of the eight-eyed bandit that just wears a sweater and shorts. Eh, uh, I guess you're kinda right, but is that really the most important? No silly, I was joking. We need to get our abilities under control and have experience with them. Going out there to save people without being ready or prepared is suicidal. Luckily we have the greatest AI in existence that's ready to help us every step of the way. Peter then undid his invisibility and jumped down from the hammock and landed on his feet, he then pointed at Gwen and said. Get ready cause our training montage is about to begin. Chapter 14, Chapter 14 Third Person's POV Peter and Gwen back in their hideout were surrounded by holographic pictures of different suits. They were swiping designs after designs looking for the perfect one to match them. Gwen stopped scrolling after a while and tried to picture what she really wants. In the corner of her eye she saw the spiders that bit them. Seeing them gave Gwen an idea, she started using the colors of the spider that bit her. When she was done what stood before her was a white and pink spider outfit. Hmm, something is missing but what is it the more she looked at the more she felt something didn't seem right. She turned and looked towards Peter and saw him wearing his hoodie while hanging upside down from a thread with a hand on his chin in a thinking position. When she watched him she snapped her fingers that's it, she turned back towards the hologram and started messing with the image of her suit she had ready. She grabbed the back of her suit hologram and motioned for something to cover it. The hologram following her movements created an image of a white hood on the suit's head, perfecting her design. When she looked at it she nodded her head it's perfect. When she was done admiring it she made a grabbing motion towards the center of the suit, making it disappear, she then threw it towards her chest making the hologram of the suit overlap with her figure. She clicked on the corner of the projection and it showed a camera where she began to look herself all over. When she was done she nodded her head once again and swiped her hand closing the camera function. Peter who was still hanging upside down while making his suit heard Gwen call him over. Hey Pete what do you think? Peter was brought out of his thoughts and looked towards Gwen's direction, when he did he lost grip of the web he was holding on to causing him to fall. Peter quickly jumped back up and looked at Gwen in awe whoa, you look absolutely fantastic. Picks. Peter then got closer to Gwen and started looking at her all around. He smiled at her and put a hand on her cheek, which made Gwen lean her head in. Peter just continued looking at her with love, you look very beautiful. Gwen smiled while blushing slightly. Peter then brought their face closer and closer making their lips touch and sharing a long kiss between them. When they pulled away Peter smiled as he said seeing you in that suit has gotten me motivated now to create my own. Peter went towards his station and cracked his knuckles it's showtime baby. Peter started scrolling through every picture, until he found the perfect one, he changed the color to a darker blue instead of it being the normal red, showing he was his own Spider-Man. Peter peeked over to Gwen and smiled one more time and went back to designing his own suit, he put a hood on his to match with Gwen. He wasn't alone in this endeavor he had a partner with him who he can trust to have his back. When he was done designing everything he looked at it with a smirk oh yeah this is it, the very start of my origin story. Peter scooped up the hologram and threw it at himself and turned towards Gwen so what do you think Peter asked while spreading his arms. Picks. Gwen came over looked Peter up and down nodding his head you look very cool. Gwen then put a hand on his symbol on his chest and continued Spider-Man. 
Peter smirk what are we coming up with our hero names now, you little ghost spider. Gwen lifted a brow at that really ghost spider, not spider woman, or spider girl. Peter shrugging his shoulders replied with what you you are wearing white like a ghost and you really love your invisibility powers for some reason, you just reappear and disappear like a ghost. You're saying it like Spider-Man is any better. Whatever you say, Spider-Man. Well now that we have the design it's time to make them. Peter then went on to his workstation and put on his metal mask and grabbed a blowtorch, he turned it on and started working on his suit. He started installing a HUD on the visor of his mask, he then started making the rest of the suit using carbon fiber, hard material that was flexible, his suit was now, resistant towards sharp objects and bullet penetrations. It was built to have resistance towards the cold, heat, and electricity. Those materials weren't easy to acquire Peter had to use the money he earned from Oscorp in order to buy them. Gwen having spent a lot of time with Peter got to know her ways around tools and machinery so it was easy for her to make her suit herself. She used the same material Peter used and used it to make the suit she designed adding the HUD into her suit as well. Hey Gwen, catch! When Gwen turned around she got two wristbands in her hands, she just looked at them in confusion. They're Webb's Hooters, I started working on yours since we got our powers two weeks ago. Gwen just look at it in confusion why would we need them we make our own webs. It's in case we run out of our own webs, who knows what might happen. These are in case of emergencies, though I did add different kinds of webs, like taser webs, impact webs, web grenades, you know anything that could be useful. Whoa, you thought of these all in two weeks while we were practicing how to use our powers. No, I just made yours in two weeks, the rest was a project I started when I was little. Right, your obsession with spiders, how could I ever forget? Isn't this all really a bit coincidence, you having an obsession with spiders and then we end up developing the powers of a spider? Gwen now started to get suspicious, everything just seems really convenient. Peter then sighed, he already came up with a cover story for his so-called obsession with spiders if anyone asked him about it. And the thing about his cover story is that it essentially isn't a lie, you know I previously mentioned that my parents died and were in a plane accident and that they were scientists. That wasn't everything there's more to it that I haven't told you and the others. Gwen just looked shocked not expecting there to actually be a story behind this, she went and sat down giving her full attention to Peter. You see my parents used to work as scientists, something you already know. And while working they were experimenting and testing on the serum that turned Captain America into the super soldier that he is. I guess they were trying to create their own or improve on it, they thought for that for it to improve it would be better if it was mixed along with animals. The latest animal they were working on were spiders, they got really far into the project. But here's the thing the person who they were working for is sick, their boss thought that this would be his cure, so he wanted to move towards human experimentation. Which was something my parents were highly against. They were going to be forced into accepting it, by involving their families, so they decided to run away before they discovered who said family were. By running away they would be able to hide for a while and protect their family. When Peter got to this part he sighed once again and looked up while closing his eyes. It was at this point that Peter really hated his gift of photographic memory. He continued where he left off. I remember the last time I saw my mom and dad, they were in a panic. Peter then went and explained what happened that night all those years ago. Their plane then mysteriously got into an accident. But it wasn't an accident it was a hit. Basically a retrieval mission for their research and to silence them, and that's where my obsession with spiders comes from it's something my parents last researched. It makes me feel closer to them, when I start studying them. Gwen had her hands cover her mouth from the shock she was experiencing, when Peter finished she went up and wrapped Peter in a tight hug oh Peter. When she broke the hug she asked so do you know who this boss is, the one who murdered your parents? Peter just gave her a sad smile and asked Gwen by what did we get bit by and where did it happen? Gwen scrounged her face in confusion wondering why Peter would ask that at a time like this but seeing his sad smile she still answered anyways we were bite by enhanced spider at us, no Gwen said placing her hands near her mouth again. Peter just nodded and raised a brow at her why do you think I stop you from interning there at every chance we get? Gwen was still in shock by the revelation so you mean to say that Norman Osborne killed your mom and dad? But aren't you friends with Harry? Peter just shrugged his shoulder I tried to hate him honestly, I really did but I can't really blame him for something his father did, that just seems stupid. Gwen just smiled softly at that, thankful that their interactions with their friend wasn't a lie. So what are you going to do now? Gwen asked unsure of what to do after that shocking revelation. Peter just smiled as he reached out his hand and grabbed his mask. 
while softly caressing it he just said the only thing left to do. Peter puts the mask over his head and with a final pull down he says. We become Spider-Man. Chapter 15, Chapter 15 Third Person's POV Gwen and Peter were currently at the tallest building in New York, in the lower Manhattan the World Trade Center. On the top of the building Gwen was holding on to Peter with her dear life. Do we really have to do IT here Peter why couldn't we do IT at the tallest building in Queens, where we actually live? Why oh why did we have to go all the way down here just to jump, why did I follow you? Gwen screamed with her eyes closed to scared to look down. Isn't it obvious, this is the start, this is where everything begins. It has to be the biggest beginning anyone has ever seen. Gwen this is the start of our story, and it obviously has to start at the highest point, this is our leap of faith. Gwen calmed her breathing but was still shaking, she then opened her eyes and closed them again, she then slowly opened them again but mostly focused on Peter. How are you not scared? She asked, but Gwen looked more closely and saw Peter's hand shaking slightly. Peter slowly turned his head towards her who says I'm not, to be honest I'm petrified Peter then took a deep breath to calm his nerves but I have to do this, honestly you don't have to do this with me if you don't want to but it's something I have to do. Gwen slapped her face with both of her palms to calm herself down and get focus, she then reached out and grabbed Peter's hand, when Peter felt her hand he gave her a gentle squeeze. They looked at each other and nodded, when they let go of each other's hands Peter turned around and spread out his arms. You're doing it that way? Why? It's basically a trust fall. Gwen just shook her head and following Peter's example she spread out her arms and closed her eyes while facing forwards. Let's count to three, ready suggested Peter. Gwen nodded and said ready. They both then started counting. One. Two. Three. Go. Gwen fell forward while Peter fell backwards both with their hands spread out. As they were falling all they could feel and hear was the sound of the wind as it hit them through the mask and suit. After a minute of free falling they both opened their eyes at the same time. Peter quickly turns over and they both shoot their webs at the same time in opposite direction of each other. The momentum then carries them and they swing across the street of New York making them scream in excitement. Woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo shouted Peter feeling the rush of swinging freely for the very first time. Woo-woo-woo-woo-woo-woo ah, shouted Gwen at the same time as Peter feeling the same excitement. The people of New York had their mouths wide open watching them as they swung through the streets, some tried to take out their phone and take a picture but by the time they were ready, they were both already gone. Ha 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 this is amazing shouted Peter as the wines pushed against his face. He 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 you're right this is pretty cool. Replied Gwen. After swinging for a few minutes both Spider-Man and Ghost Spider looked at each other and nodded, they both tapped their ear at the same time connecting themselves with each other and Arnie. Arnie you there Peter asked. The voice of a mature woman was then heard always available for you father Arnie answered. Oh so you finally decided on what voice to use, it sounds less robotic that's good. Anyways can you hack into a police radar and guide us to any close ongoing crime. Right away father. After a few seconds a map showed up in the corner of both of their eyes guiding them to where they need to go. Arnie then provided them with the situation there's an ongoing police chase occurring a few blocks ahead of you, there is active fire going on so caution is advised. Got it. Both Spider-Man and the Ghost Spider said at the same time. They both then picked up the pace of their swinging and a few feet ahead of them they saw four police cruisers chasing a car with four robbers, two were sticking out the window and shooting their guns at the police. Both Peter and Gwen swung towards the car they both looked at each other and nodded, when they swung towards the car, the police chasing them look at the two people swinging in shock. Peter went and aimed his web at one of the guys sticking out the window while Gwen did the same for the other guy. They both pulled them out of the car and stuck them to the building they passed by with their webs disarming them. Both of them then pulled up to the front of the door. License and registrations please. Said Peter jokingly. The driver and his passenger just looked at them in shock before they pulled out their guns and started firing at them. Both Peter and Gwen quickly disarmed them by pulling the guns out of their hands with their webs. Peter then took a hold of the guy driving and threw him towards Gwen. Gwen caught him and grabbed the other guy from the passenger seat leaving the car empty and jumped out of the way with both of them in tow. Once the car was empty Peter zipped himself in front of the car and spread out his arms and legs slightly, Peter took a hold of the car and as it pushed him back he lifted it up in the air stopping all of its momentum. Peter then softly dropped the car back down and wiped his hands clean. Gwen then came and high-fived Peter, when Peter looked over her shoulders he saw Gwen had rounded up all the other criminals and tied them up with her web. Nice job he said while nodding his head. You too Gwen replied. Afterwards they both heard someone shout freeze. 
hands where we can see them. Peter then looked towards the four police cars that stopped in front of them and had their guns out pointing at them. Peter waved at them in fake excitement. Hey! Officers! Good job out there! We sure do make a great team! Peter then tapped on his wrist like he was pointing at a watch I would love to stay but we have a very busy schedule. Peter then shot his web at a nearby building and started to swing away with Gwen following soon after. We'll see you guys later, and you're welcome for the gift, from your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Peter shouted as he swung away. Gwen then shouted alongside Peter and from your friendly neighborhood Ghost Spider. The police officers then lowered their guns and looked at each other unsure of what to make of the situation what just happened. One of them asked. One of them took off their cap and ran his finger through their hair I think we got help from a couple of vigilantes dressed up as spiders. Another officer then came up to him and asked Sir, what do we do with them the officer pointed towards the tied up criminals. Untie them from whatever they're tied with and arrest them properly. Let's report back afterwards. Yes sir the other three nodded and got to work. Peter tapped on his ear okay Arnie what's next? There's a giant fire east of your current location, please head there immediately. I'll send you the specific location in a SEC. They both nodded, when they got the location they both started swinging their way into the direction. While swinging they started doing tricks, they would do backflips, front flips, twirls, anything they could do to enjoy themselves. They quickly arrived and when they got there they landed on top of the fire truck that was trying to stop the fire but they were having trouble putting it out. When they landed Peter asked are they civilians stuck inside? The firefighters that were trying to put out the fire with a hose stopped what they were doing and turned their head and looked at them in shock. The captain of their squad quickly shouted get off from there. You're disrupting us from working. We're just trying to help, our suit is fire resistant we could go in there and save the civilians we need to know how many are inside said Gwen. Quickly leave before you get in the way and prevent us from doing our job. The captain demanded. Peter clicked his tongue we don't have time ghost, people's life are at stake here. Peter tapped his temple and said Arnie scan for any life signature or silhouettes of people inside. Scanning. Currently there are 10 people stuck inside 2 in the bottom floor, 1 in the second floor, 3 in the third floor, 2 in the fourth floor, and 2 more in the fifth. Peter and Gwen nodded, before they went into action Peter turned towards the captain get ready and get everything set up there 10 people inside, we're going to quickly get them out. What? Stop this foolishness. Peter didn't listen as he quickly went onto the bottom floor, while Gwen shot two webs and pulled herself inside the second floor. Once Peter was inside he saw fire everywhere and wood falling from the ceiling no wonder they couldn't get in Peter thought. He then followed where Arnie showed him the silhouettes and found a couple under a wooden log that was starting to catch on fire and making its way to the couple. They were unable to escape due to the log while they just kept screaming for help. Peter quickly arrived and reassured them don't worry I'm here to help. Peter effortlessly lifted the log and said quickly crawl from under there. The couple nodded and crawled out as Peter threw the log to the side. He then picked them up and put them on his back grab on tight and don't let go, don't move too much, we don't know what might be broken or where you could be injured. The couple nodded and held on to Peter, Peter ran and shot two webs out the window and pulled himself outside bypassing the fire quickly as to not get the civilians burned. Peter carefully laid them down by a soft bed the firefighters had in case of emergencies or people that needed rescue. They were trapped under the rubble, they may be injured, please check on them. When Peter shot his webs he pulled himself up towards the third floor, while he did that Gwen came out with two kids respectively seven and eight years old. When she put them down she patted their head and turned towards the firefighters they were hiding in a closet seeking refuge. When Gwen said this she heard the voice of a woman shout my babies. A woman and a man came and wrapped her arms around the children, she turned towards Gwen and said thank you, thank you, thank you. Gwen just smiled and nodded before saying just doing what I can Gwen then went and shot her webs up to the fourth floor and went to rescue the remaining people. The firefighters just looked at this in shock and in awe before their captain quickly brought them back. Quickly get everything ready for when those two bring out more people. In the meantime continue putting out the fire. While Peter and Gwen were rescuing the people inside the building, the people outside were recording everything that was happening. Peter quickly went inside the third floor. In the corner he saw a family of three grouped together, the couple was shielding their child with their bodies, while the fire around them was quickly spreading. Peter went and got inside their circle and said Emma need you to trust me I can get you out of here safely. The mother and father looked at their child before looking at each other and nodding will trust you the father said thinking about the safety of his child and wife. Peter nodded at them as he took the child that was about five years old and held him against his chest, 
Peter then turned towards the couple and said get on me, I can carry all of you to safety. The couple just looked at Peter with confusion I have super strength, trust me I can carry all of you to safety. They just looked at him wearily. Peter sighed before using his web and making a sack in his chest and putting the kid inside it. He then went and picked up the couple which caught them off guard. Peter started running and went towards where he came from and jumped down from the window while holding the couple. Eh, the couple screamed when Peter jumped but Peter paid no mind as he landed perfectly on the ground. Peter then went and put the parents down and took out the kid from the pouch he made and put him on the ground as well. Kid just looked up at Peter in fascination a superhero. Peter just smiled as he ruffled his hair stay safe kid. Peter and Gwen continued saving people until the entire building was cleared. Once they were done they both let out a sigh of relief, which was followed by the people around them clapping and cheering. The firefighter chief came and shook their hand thank you for saving everyone. Peter smiled as he said Spider-Man, you can call me Spider-Man. He then shook Gwen's hand and you. Ghost Spider Gwen smiled. Thank you as well for a fantastic job. Well we have to go we have more people to save said Peter. Gwen nodded what he said. Then once again thank you both for the help. Gwen and Peter then jumped and webbed away from the scene and as they were leaving they heard the little kids they saved saying their thanks. Thank you Spider-Man and Ghost Spider. Peter spun on his web and turned towards their direction and did his casual two-finger wave, saying his goodbye. While Gwen did the same, she turned around while swinging but instead of Peter's move, she blew them an exaggerated kiss. With that both Spider-Man and Ghost Spider spent their Saturday saving everyone they could, whether it was petty robbery, store theft, purse thieves, car theft. Whatever they could find they spent the day stopping it, they would go between Manhattan and Queens swinging the day away stopping crime. Chapter 16, Chapter 16 Third Person's POV When Peter and Gwen finished their first day of crime fighting they went and went towards their hideout. When they arrived they took off their mask and kissed each other. Now that's what I call a successful day of heroing Peter says as they pull back from their kiss. Gwen just smirk cool it Parker, it's only our first day you can't be too excited. They went and changed back into their regular clothes while they talked about their first day of doing hero work, they were clearly still excited still experiencing the adrenaline. When they changed they put their suits in their bag to always have available and when they finished they went out of their hideout and turned invisible. Which then both of them proceeded to jump building from building to their home. Once Peter delivered Gwen to her doorstep he made it to his home. When he just arrived at his block he saw the door to MJ's house burst open and MJ come running out in the middle of the night while placing both hands on one of her eyes. Pics of MJ When Peter saw her he quickly ran up to her MJ are you alright? MJ tried to turn her head and try to hide her eye but Peter grabbed her chin and made her look at him. When Peter saw her black eye his expression quickly turned to rage but he still softly asked her are you alright? Which she softly nodded but lowered her head in shame, Peter sighed before patting her head full of red hair there's nothing you should be ashamed of. I'll fix this wait a minute. Wait Peter MJ called out but Peter didn't listen and made his way towards her house with meaningful steps and a purpose. Peter didn't even bother knocking and just kicked the door down. Boom. Knock knock bitch Peter said with his hands in his pockets and a foot sticking out in the air with the door on the floor. MJ's dad was sitting on a lounge chair sitting down with a beer bottle in hand. He quickly jumped when he heard the door break and saw Peter there with an angered expression. Mr. Watson got visibly angry when he saw his door broken and shouted with anger boy. You're going to be paying for that. Who the hell do you think you are breaking my door? Peter didn't listen and punched him right on his face breaking his nose. Mr. Watson dropped to the ground due to his intoxicated state and from the pain of Peter's punch. Although Peter didn't use a lot of strength since he didn't want to kill him, he used enough strength to make it hurt. Peter then got on top of Mr. Watson and started pummeling his fist on his face. MJ quickly came and tried to grab Peter from behind and make him stop but he wasn't budging. Peter stop. Please stop Peter, you're going to kill him. MJ shouted, even though she hasn't had the greatest moments with her father, that piece of shit was still her father. Seeing Peter not stopping she quickly ran across the street and started to rapidly knock on Uncle Ben and Aunt May's door. Knock 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 knock. Uncle Ben opened the door quickly and was shocked to see MJ's state but before he could ask if she was alright, rushing to get her words out MJ said please stop Peter he's going to kill my father if we don't hurry. Ben hearing this and seeing MJ's state quickly got the picture and rushed towards MJ's house when he got there he saw Peter beating an unconscious man with blood on his fist. Uncle ran towards Peter and wrapped his arms in a chokehold stopping him from attacking any further Peter that's enough already. Uncle Ben said sternly. 
which made Peter stopped as he panted heavily from the anger he was experiencing and holding himself back with all of his willpower from attacking any further. While still holding Peter in a soft lock chokehold Uncle Ben asked you good now. Peter just silently nodded while still clenching his teeth. Uncle Ben sighed before nodding and releasing Peter. When he released him Peter was still looking at Mr. Watson's face that was unrecognizable, some of his teeth were missing, his nose was bent in a weird angle, and his jaw hanged opened and dislocated to the side. Peter took a deep breath and calmed himself, he then turned and went towards MJ who was watching everything from the broken door. Peter didn't say anything and just grabbed her hand with his bloody hand and led her inside his house. Once inside he made her sit on the couch while he went to the bathroom and cleaned his hands from all the blood, he grabbed some wipes that were nearby and cleaned his glasses as well that had blood splutter on them. Once he was done he put them back on and went and took out a first aid kit with some more wipes. When Peter came down he sat down next to her and quietly cleaned the blood he smeared on her hands. When he finished he started applying first aid on her face, he went to the kitchen to get an ice pack and applied it to her face. Peter then broke the deafening silence between them. I'm sorry you had to see that. MJ just shook her head no don't apologize it was a long time coming, I mean you did warn me before that if he laid hands on me you would hurt him, one. There was another long silence between them before MJ softly smiled thank you for taking care of me and protecting me, Tiger MJ leaned her head on his shoulder and closed her eyes while Peter just rested his head back against the sofa. After a few minutes of a comfortable silence between them the sound of an ambulance was heard outside after a few minutes Uncle Ben comes in and says I'm going to accompany Philip to the hospital, we'll talk about what happened later when May gets back from work. Peter nodded his head which made Uncle Ben nod in return and with that he went on his way. Chapter 17 Chapter 17 Peter's POV While deep in thought I felt my phone vibrate in my pockets. It was Gwen she just sent a text in all uppercase letters saying watch the news. It's probably about our adventure superheroing. I reached for the remote and turned on the TV and switched it to the evening news. MJ who had her head resting on my shoulder looked up at me in confusion. Not having an answer all I could do was awkwardly smile and say. Ah uh, I really wanted to watch the news. MJ just looked even more confused, she then just shrugged her shoulder and looked towards the TV to watch. Good evening everyone my name is Travis Michael your host for today's 8 o'clock news and today we have one special story to report for you all. A picture of both Gwen and I bringing out people out of the fire dressed in our spider suit appeared on the top right corner of the TV. I got to say I look fantastic. Inverting the colors of the original Spider-Man suit really was a good idea, good job me. Although it wasn't for aesthetic reasons that I did it, it actually turned out better than I expected. I wanted to show that I was different, that I'm not just like every single Peter Parker. That I'm me my own person inside, I don't know to who I was showing it to but I wanted to show it maybe it was to myself so I don't get lost in my identity. The blonde new reporter then started talking when they enlarged the picture on the screen. Vigilantes. Not one but two of them have appeared in our city of New York. We don't know what their motives are but they have started helping stop crime all over the city. The pictures you see in front of you is them helping the firefighters rescue people from a burning building down in Manhattan. It was thanks to their help that those people are still alive. But that wasn't all they did. Apparently there has been multiple reports of their activities all over Manhattan and Queens. I know what you may be asking yourself. How did they appear between those places so fast and that answer to that question is webs. Multiple sightings have been made of those two swinging all over the city while shooting webs from their wrist and using them to travel. Where do those webs come from no one knows. Now then we have our lovely reporter Linda Rose at scene, where she talks to the survivors of the burning building sharing their story with the vigilantes. Linda the news guy nodded finishing it off. My phone buzzed again and it was another all cap text from Gwen. Gwen, we're on the news. Peter, that we are, it's almost surreal. Gwen, I know right. We look so heroic in those pictures, carrying them to safety. Gwen, what else do you think they'll say? Gwen, do you think they will talk bad about us? Gwen, maybe it wouldn't be so bad. Gwen, I just feel so excited to be on the news. Peter, yeah I can tell, you are being way too excited and anxious about this. Peter, why don't we just listen to what they have to say first, lol. While I was texting Gwen a woman appeared on the news in front of the burnt people where Gwen and I previously were. My name is Linda Rose and today we are here today with survivors of this unfortunate incident. With me here are the parents of young children that had the chance to talk with the vigilantes. Ma'am what can you tell us about these vigilantes that appeared today and your experience with them? 
the mother just smiled as she pulled her two kids' clothes. She then spoke into the mic yes is thanks to them that I'm able to stand here with my babies, especially with the one named Ghost Spider. She was the one that went and rescued my two children from the second floor. If it wasn't for her I don't even want to think of what would have happened to these two. If you're watching Ghost Spider, thank you once again. When she finished talking Gwen texted me again. Gwen, me, she's talking about me. Seeing her like this always makes me smile. The news lady then went and talked talk to a couple that were wrapped in a blanket. She went up to them and asked them hello sir and miss can you tell me your experience with the vigilantes today. Was it a good one? Was it a bad one? Is there anything you can share? It was the couple that I saved on the first floor and were stuck under the log and rebels. MJ sat up from my shoulder and started to pay really close attention to the news, she was watching them with fascination. Seeing this I raised a brow you seem really interested in this. She turned her head and asked excitedly and you're not, they talking about actual heroes like heroes with powers and secret identity and all that stuff. I've known you since we were little, there's no way you have a fascination with heroes and I didn't know about it. Or were you just keeping it a secret that no one was ever supposed to know? MJ then got embarrassed it's not the superhero part that got me excited it's the whole powers part, I always wonder how amazing it would be to have powers and fly and things like that. MJ's face then got redder I also like listening to their different stories MJ then took a deep breath as she said I haven't told anyone this before but, my dream was always to be a journalist or a reporter. I like discovering the truth and listening to the different perspectives people have on things, like their point of view and stuff. Seeing her like this I can't help but pat her head why didn't you say so before MJ I think it's wonderful you have a dream and goal to work towards. MJ just lowered her head cause it's nothing really great compared to what you all are doing. Harry wants to do work as an environmentalist, Gwen wants to work as a biologist, I don't really know what you specifically want to do but I know it's smart. I felt that you guys would look down on it, or make fun of it, since it isn't as smart or as beneficial to everyone else. I guess she's feeling a little vulnerable and is getting more comfortable expressing what she thinks with me that's good. But hearing her I just let out a sigh while I brought her closer and leaned my head against hers. MJ you have known us for a really long time did you really think we would laugh or make fun of something you love or have a passion for? MJ just slightly shook her head I know you guys won't but the fear of the possibility is still there. MJ if you truly want to be a journalist slash reporter, just know you have my support 110%. It's not going to be easy, no job ever is but I know you, if anyone can do it, it's you. MJ closes her eyes and lets out a sigh of relief thank you tiger, it means a lot. Gwen then sent a text. Gwen, did you hear what they had to say about us, they were all so nice. Peter, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the news. Gwen, what? Then what were you doing? Peter, I'm currently with MJ, I was just comforting her and discussing something with her. Gwen, what happened? Is everything okay? Do you need me to come over there and help? Peter, sigh, it's a long story, so basically. After I explained everything, Gwen sent a fury of text messages. Gwen, what? Gwen, that piece of shit. Gwen, how dare he? Gwen, he deserved every one of those punches. Too bad Uncle Ben had to stop you. Gwen, he had what was coming to him. Gwen, is MJ alright? Peter, yeah she's fine at the moment. Gwen, should I come over? Peter, nah it's alright. Everything is already taken care of. Gwen, are you sure? Peter, yeah we've been fighting and rescuing people all day you must be tired, I can take care things here. Gwen, then what about you, we did the same about of things are you saying you're not tired? Peter, exhausted honestly but literally everything is over. Gwen, if you say so. When I saw what time it was and how much Gwen and I have been texting, I turned to MJ and said be right back. While I was walking to the basement MJ called out where are you going? She asked curiously. Grabbing the toolbox I said while I continue walking. MJ then started to follow still curious what are you going to do? I'm going to fix the door to your house obviously, if I left it like that and something got stolen I would feel guilty. MJ then started panicking slightly do you think someone already broke in, what if they robbed the place clean, what are we going to do? MJ asked worrying for no reason. No one broke and you can relax. What how can you be so sure? Because, the couch we were sitting on is next to the window and you live right across the street, so I was watching everything. 
MJ stopped prancing around in panic when she heard me and froze before pouting then say that first why did you have to scare me like that? I gave her a smirk as I joked isn't it obvious, it's funny. When I got the toolbox I went over to her house while she still followed me around not knowing what to do. I just sighed at that want to help me. Really? She asked excitedly. Yet. Yeah. I then started putting everything back together to how it was while MJ would pass me the tools I needed. Nail. Here. Hammer. Here you go. Screws. Right here. Screwdriver. Ratio. I wiped my hand when I was done. Thank you said MJ. But I just brushed it off don't, I was the one to destroy it in the first place. Still I want to thank you for everything. Once MJ said her thanks she turned around was about to go back inside. Where the hell does she think she's going? There's no way in hell I'm leaving her by herself after what happened today. And where do you think you're going? I ask. MJ just looked at me in confusion and just pointed towards the door while tilting her head slightly um, home. I scoff yet, there's no way I'm leaving you in an empty house by yourself. You can stay the night at with me, I'm 100% sure Uncle Ben will understand. MJ then softly smiled before awkwardly asking and pointing towards the door so how can I still shower and change? Hey? Isn't that obvious, you're just not staying by yourself, that's all. I'm not stopping you from doing anything else. You better come over, don't make me have to come carry you back with me. I then checked the time and saw that it was time for Aunt May to get off her shift when you come, I should be making dinner so be prepared. MJ nodded feeling embarrassed and shyly went back inside while blushing. Once she disappeared I went back home and called Aunt May and Uncle Ben and explained the situation. Both of them understood the situation and said they were okay with what Peter said. Uncle Ben just said we'll talk tomorrow, that it was better to talk this out between us face to face when MJ wasn't around. Once I was done with the call I started making dinner, when I was almost finished both Aunt May and MJ came through the door together. MJ waited while Aunt May got to relaxing after a long day at work. After a few minutes when we were setting up the table Uncle Ben came. He didn't say anything all he said was that everything was taken care of. I tried to ask him what he meant but he wouldn't say which was worrying. We then enjoyed our dinner which was followed by us going to bed. We didn't have a spare room so MJ and I had to share a bed, which really wasn't anything unusual since we used to do it when we were little, but that stopped since Gwen and I started dating a while ago. Luckily I talked to Gwen about it and she was understanding about it, as she knew I wouldn't cheat on her. Third person's POV Peter laid in bed with his back turned to MJ to respect her space. When he laid in bed he quickly fell asleep due to being tired about the whole day, even though they had enhanced stamina they still get tired. While Peter was sleeping MJ was still awake. She just kept looking at his back with quivering lips, she pressed her head against his back softly as to not wake him up. She just closed her eyes as tears unwillingly fell from her eyes. Her tears slightly washing away the makeup she put on to cover her black eye. I love you. I love you but you will never belong to me, your heart belongs to another woman that's not me and it hurts so much. MJ silently cried herself to sleep. Chapter 18, Chapter 18 Third Person's POV When Peter and MJ woke up, like usual Peter would always laugh at her. Ha 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 your bed hair never fails to make me laugh. MJ had her red hair all over the place in a crazy manner. MJ was barely even awake, she kept nodding off while sitting upright on the bed. I really didn't miss you laughing at me every time I would wake up here MJ said in a groggy voice. Sorry sorry I really can't help it. Yeah you say that every time. MJ then got up and went to exit through the window like she normally does. What are you doing Aunt May and Uncle Ben know you're here, you don't have to sneak out. Hey? Oh right sorry force of habit MJ said embarrassed. When they went downstairs, Aunt May was in the kitchen cooking. Oh good morning you two. Good morning Aunt May both of them greeted. Are you going to stay for breakfast, Mary Jane? Asked Aunt May peeking out from the kitchen. I would love to but my mom probably got home from work and I want to see her. That's a shame then, Peter make sure to walk her home. Peter nodded and walked MJ across the street where she waved goodbye and went inside. When Peter returned he sat down at the table with Uncle Ben as they waited in silence for Aunt May to be finished with breakfast. Uncle Ben then broke the silence when we eat. Go get ready and meet me in the car. We will be going for a drive he said sternly and with authority. Peter just meekly replied yes sir. Why is he so scary? By the great weaver, I thought Uncle Ben was supposed to be a wise old aged man, 
not this scary looking behemoth with muscles. I'm supposed to be the one with the superpowers, so why does he terrify me? When Aunt May brought breakfast they started eating in silence until Aunt May started gossiping about the Watsons' situation. I feel bad for that little girl I tell you, her father's useless, her mother has to work very long hours at the hospital to support them, and her sister got married too quickly and left. So she's basically all alone. Be sure to take care of her Peter. Peter just nodded seriously before continuing eating. When he was done he went and got ready, after a few minutes he went down and went towards Uncle Ben's car. When he sat down, Uncle Ben didn't say anything and just started the car and drove away. While driving Uncle Ben didn't say anything for a few minutes and neither did Peter, they just drove in silence. After a few more minutes Uncle Ben started talking sigh, I'm both proud and disappointed in you Peter. I'm proud because you defended your friend when she was experiencing an unfortunate situation. I'm proud of you for looking out for her and always making sure she was alright. But I'm also disappointed on how you handled the situation. Although he deserved what was coming to him, that wasn't something for you to do. I'm disappointed in the fact that you let your rage and anger consume your rational thinking. You're a very smart boy, that much is obvious, but not when you're angry, when you're angry you make very stupid decisions. MJ came running to the house looking worried and terrified, you may not realize it but that girl relies heavily on you. So seeing you like that scared her, you should never let the people you want to protect and want to keep safe be scared of you. I don't ever want to see you in that state again, do I make myself clear Uncle Ben said calmly but sternly. Peter lowered his head and sighed yes sir. Uncle Ben looked at Peter from the corner of his eyes, and nodded without ever taking his eyes off the road. Uncle Ben put a hand on his shoulder Peter, the only reason I'm this harsh on you is cause I worry and care about you. Do you know what would have happened if Mr. Watson decided to press charges, you would have gone to jail for breaking and entering, and assault. Peter looked at Uncle Ben in confusion you mean he's not pressing charges. Let's just say I made a few calls to a buddy of mine and got everything sorted out. Mr. Watson would be the one going to prison for child abuse and won't be able to press charges. He would be in there for only six months since the harm was of a lesser decree. Peter was silent for a few seconds, I see, thank you Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben just nodded his head as he continued to drive around the block in silence. When they arrived back home and Peter exited the car Uncle Ben reminded Peter once again remember, don't let anger consume your thoughts and guide your actions. Peter seriously nodded his head and went inside to his room. When he got inside he started putting on his Spider-Man suit with clothes over it, he grabbed his bag and started walking out. When he was leaving Aunt May called out to him and where do you think you're going this early in the morning mister? I'm going to be with Gwen. Aunt May narrowed her eyes slightly before nodding her head and saying all right but don't stay out too late, you have school tomorrow. Peter nodded and soon left to meet up with Gwen. He went and waited for Gwen inside the hideout, he took off his clothes leaving only his Spider-Man attire on. While waiting for her he just sat down and looked towards the ceiling and went into a deep thought. Gwen soon arrived and saw Peter deep in his thoughts, while getting ready she called out to him snapping him out of his thoughts Peter are you okay? No not really. What happened? Gwen asked worriedly. I just got scolded for the first time by Uncle Ben, and let me tell you, it really doesn't feel good. Is it about what happened with MJ? Yup. Gwen just smiled at him before going over and kissing him on the side of his head to make him feel better. Which worked a little. When Gwen was done she showed him her mask and asked ready. Peter went and grabbed his mask putting it on his head. He then nodded and pulled down his mask saying. Always. Chapter 19 Chapter 19 Third Person's POV With a drop from the sky both Gwen and Peter swung across the busy city of New York, looking for any crime to stop and people to save, but they got nothing. Um Ghost, I think we might have started too early, I don't think a lot of crime happens during the morning. Sigh you're right we should be active during the night where the people need us more, we aren't saving anybody by coming out when there's barely any crimes. Yeah, but some people would need us during the day as well. We couldn't just go during the night, since when we become more active and known they would start causing trouble during the day in order to avoid us. How about this, one of us goes and fight during the day, while the other one would fight during the night keeping the peace for both sides Peter suggested hesitantly. But then we would barely have time for each other and we are still new with this I don't want us to fight apart for a while. Maybe in the future but not right now said Gwen. Yeah, me either I was just throwing ideas in the air. A.RAC.H.N.I.D then spoke to both of them at the same time interrupting their conversation. There is a current bank robbery in progress, 
though it's a bit far, you should be able to arrive quickly due to your speed. I guess we'll leave this discussion for another time, I guess this is why it's called the city that never sleeps said Gwen as they both started picking up the pace. Everywhere they swung by people would take out their phones and try to take a photo but due to their speed they were unable to. Both of them then landed on a nearby building and started to plan out what to do next. The plan is simple honestly we turn invisible sneak and secretly take down the robbers one by one until they are all taken care of said Peter before tapping the side of his head. Arnie scan how many of them are there and can you single them out from the civilians? Scanning. There are a total of 15 robbers currently inside each armed with heavy weaponry. All current hostages are placed in the middle of the first floor. Both Gwen and Peter turned invisible and made their way towards the bank. While hanging to the side of the building, they started crawling around looking for the perfect place to enter. Gwen found a window that was isolated from the view of everyone inside. She stuck her hands by the window and using a bit of force, lifted it up opening it. Using their flexibility they both snuck inside and started crawling on the walls and onto the ceiling of the large bank. Due to how high they were allowed to whisper to each other without getting discovered. Due to our camouflage is going to be difficult to time our takedown perfectly. We have to start with the outer force patrolling the area and the guys inside the vault taking the money Peter whispered. We'll start with the guys in the vault and we'll slowly work our way inside to where the hostages are and secure their safety. Once their planning section was other they both got to work. Peter stood up and started walking upside down opposing the laws of gravity, he quietly made his way inside the vault. Once inside the vault Peter saw two guys inside quickly stuffing money inside the duffel bags they were holding. Due to the enclosed space of the vault Peter was walking low enough that if he reached out his hands one of the guys would touch him. Peter waited for a few seconds while watching the guys scurrying putting everything away once they were close to one another, Peter got right in between them, they both then heard the voice of Peter whispering. You may now kiss the bride. Boink. Which was followed by their heads being pushed against each other and losing consciousness. Before they touched the ground Peter took a hold of them so they didn't make any noise, he then took them together and wrapped them up in the same webs. When he finished he carefully put them in the corner away from everyone's sight and went towards his next target while still camouflaged. There were two other guys guarding the entrance with their hands on their guns ready to take action at any minute. Peter just smirked knowing this was going to be easy. Meanwhile Gwen was carefully maneuvering around the open space of the bank. Instead of using her organic webs, Gwen decided that it was best for her to use her webs hooters as they would give her more versatility at the moment. While camouflage Gwen propelled down while holding the webs while she was upside down. She appeared behind a robber who was the farthest away from everyone else. Gwen just tapped on the shoulder causing the guy to quickly snap his head and point his gun at whoever that was that touched him. That's weird, there's no one there, I'm supposed to be by myself here he mumbled to himself. Gwen smirked as she webbed his entire face causing him to instinctively drop his gun and grab whatever has on his face. He tried screaming but whatever was blocking his face was preventing him from opening his mouth, muffling his voice. Before the gun could touch the floor and make noise Gwen caught it and smacked it across the guy's chin causing him to quickly be knocked out. Gwen threw the gun at the unconscious robber and started to web him up together with it. Once she was done, she moved the webs that were covering his nose to at least the him breathe. The same web that propelled her down started to retract in on itself, it started pulling Gwen along with the robber back up with her. When Gwen stuck the webbed up robber to the ceiling she went towards her next target repeating the same process, stealthily taking down all of the guards. While she was doing that Peter has come out of the vault and started helping Gwen taking care of everything. They were done with everyone within three minutes leaving only two other robbers guarding the hostages. Peter then called Gwen and said let's take care of those guys at the same time. Gwen nodded and both turned invisible and went and stood at opposite sides of each other, they both then started running towards them at the same time. When they got close, they both dropped their camouflage surprising everyone, they both punched their respective guys in the chins rattling their brains and making them lose consciousness. Peter and Gwen then high-fived each other celebrating their victories. Peter then turned towards the hostages and gave them a cheerful thumbs up. You guys are now alright. They then heard the sounds of sirens coming from the police. While they heard the sound of the police, they also heard the sound of a gun cocking back. They quickly turned towards the sound and found someone from the hostages taking a kid in his arm. Shit someone from the robbers were blending in with the hostages Gwen whispered. The robber just looked at both of them and with a crazed look said while pressing the gun to the kid's head let me go, let me escape and the kid doesn't have to get hurt how does that sound. The hostages then looked nervous while the mother of the kid started crying with worry no please take me instead, please leave my baby out of this please. Peter put his hands in a low surrendering position. 
Woe man you don't have to do this. Due to the position of his hand and the height of which they were it gave Peter the perfect opportunity to shoot his webs at the gun. Once it connected Peter lifted his hand high in the air taking away the gun away from the robber's hands. The robber wasn't expecting it which allowed Peter to catch him off guard with it. Once the robber was disarmed Gwen ran towards him and kicked him in the middle of the face breaking his nose and taking a hold of the kid. Are you alright kid? Gwen asked. The kid slowly nodded with an amazed expression a superhero he whispered. Peter turned towards the now free hostages and started undoing their bindings. While that was happening they heard the cops outside say come out with your hands up we the place totally surrounded. When Peter finished, all the hostages started thanking them profusely. Peter and Gwen then started gathering all the robbers and their weaponry and webbed them up all together. They then dragged all of them out by the front door of the bank. Once they opened the door all the cops raised their guns at both of them. Peter and Gwen just both raised their hands up, while Peter was still holding the string that was carrying all the robbers together. Behind them all the hostages started to walk out, which confused the cops further. What is going on the guy with the speaker asked. One of the hostages went and explained the situation. The cop that was in charge of the operation then went and thanked them which was followed by him reprimanding them. Thank you for dealing with them and saving the hostages, but you know that what you just did can be considered a crime. What you two did was pretty reckless, you could have gotten them killed. But still thank you Spider-Man and Ghost Spider. You know of us. Gwen asked not expecting to be recognized on their second day at this. The cop just sighed unfortunately, when two masked freaks start appearing and getting involved in police business they are bound to be mentioned and told to be on the lookout for them. Since everything is taken care of I'll leave you with just a warning you two, we don't need you to get involved in our business making it more complicated than it already is. While they were talking, they suddenly heard the sound of tires screeching. When they looked over they saw four armor trucks swerving and shooting at the cops while they made their escape. Shit both Peter and Gwen said at the same time. It looks like there were more than the fifteen hiding about waiting, this was probably their escape vehicles said Peter. Peter and Gwen just looked at each and nodded and jumped and webbed away towards the trucks while the police captain was shouting at them. Wait a minute you two didn't I just say not to get involved damn it. Shit. Everyone get in and chase those armored trucks. Two stay behind and call for their transport the captain said while pointing at the webbed up robbers. They all then started following orders and started chasing the trucks with the spider people a few feet in front of them. Chapter 20 Third Person's POV Shit, shit, shit. This wasn't how it was supposed to go, the boss isn't going to be happy about this. Those dumbasses just had to get caught by those freaks said the driver of the main armored truck leading the group. The driver turned his head and looked towards his buddy in the passenger seat and said called the others it's better if we split up, it should increase our chances of escape with what we have currently. The guy nodded and grabbed the walkie talkie that was laying to the side this is road 1, I repeat this is road 1, do you copy? Different voices then came through the walkie talkie. This is road 2, over. Road 3, over. Road 4, over. We need to split up and engage with the cops and those mask freaks that are following us in the next crossroad road 3 will go left with us. While road 2 and 4 will go right. Get to the base quickly or else the boss isn't going to be happy. Over and out. All three confirmed their orders and made their way to the next crossroad. Gwen and Peter quickly jumped and started following the four armored truck. They weren't the only ones following the trucks, the cops were following close behind while blasting their sirens. The next chance they got the four trucks split up into two directions. I go left you go right, deal said Peter. Got it Gwen nodded. With that they both split up and started following the trucks. While Peter was following the trucks, the back of both door was burst open. Two robbers appeared, one on each truck, both of the robbers were on one knee with a rocket launcher on their shoulders. They both just pulled the trigger without hesitation firing directly towards the cop cars. When the cops saw the rockets coming towards their direction they quickly swerved their car out of the way trying to not get hit but there was no need for such actions. Peter seeing them fire quickly zipped towards the side of a building, he then fired his web towards the rockets, once it connected Peter redirected them towards the sky and into each other making them explode. The robbers reloaded it and were about to shoot another but Peter while in the air grabbed it with his webs and pulled it away from their hands disarming them. He readjusted himself and went back to swinging and chasing them. They quickly pulled out their rifles and started shooting towards the cop and towards Spider-Man who was following close behind them. While they fired Peter had trouble maneuvering through the air which caused some of the bullets to graze his suit making him wince in pain. 
Luckily the suit was difficult to penetrate but that didn't mean the bullets didn't hurt. To get away from the bullets Peter pulled himself closer to the building and started to wall run. The cops weren't getting it off easy either, some of the bullets would break their windshield causing them to swerve and crash against one another. Peter looked back and saw one of the cop cars lose a wheel causing it to flip. Peter quickly shot his web and pulled himself closer, he caught the cop car and repositioned it back the way it was supposed to, he then used it as a springboard and, and started swinging once again. The shooting soon stopped as they needed to reload, which gave Peter the perfect opportunity. He shot his web and shot himself forward into the back of one of the trucks. I heard there was free candy so I helped myself in, hope you don't mind Peter joked as he leaned backwards dodging the butt of the rifle that one of the robbers tried to hit Peter with. While dodging Peter took a hold of the rifle and snatched it out the guy's hand sorry but I don't like to be the butt of the joke Peter said, as he did what the robber wanted to do to him, he hit him with the butt of the rifle right on his face pushing him back making him hit his head with the inside of the truck knocking him out. At the same time the other guy finished loading his gun and started to rapidly fire it at Peter. Peter positioned the gun he was holding where the bullets would hit it instead of him. I'll look at you shooting your shot. I'm honestly flattered, I really am, but unfortunately I have a girlfriend. Peter said as he dropped the gun and stuck his hands on the ceiling of the truck, where he proceeded to kick the guy back with both his feet denting the truck and knocking him into unconsciousness. Peter's spider sense then goes off and moves his head to the side as bullets pass by his head. The guy in the passenger seat had turned around and shot a bullet from his pistol. Careful there woman don't like a quick shot. Just what are you, you freak the guy in the passenger seat shouted. Congratulations on being the first of many that's going to ask me that Peter said as he grabbed the guy's head and slammed it to the side of the window breaking it and knocking him out. The driver quickly went and tried to reach for his gun but Peter pushed his head onto the steering wheel causing it to blast the horn of the truck and which made him lose consciousness. Hope that doesn't make you horn why, get it Peter said to everyone that was unconscious. Peter then grabbed the leg of the driver and made him slam the brakes. I hate to break it to you but this is your last stop. The wheels on the truck screech as the truck came to a full stop, Peter then quickly exited the truck and turned towards the cops. They're all yours now enjoy I I Peter said as he started swinging towards the next truck. The robbers already had their guns reloaded and were shooting towards Peter, Peter was jumping and swinging building to building avoiding the bullets. Peter Webb pulled one of the guns and swung it back knocking one of them unconscious. Peter then Webb pulled the other guy that was at the back of the truck and threw him towards a building they passed by and webbed him to it. As he did he couldn't help but make a quip be sure to stick around, the cops would get you I'm sure of it. Peter then started shooting webs into the wheels of the truck slowing it down. Peter shot both front and back tires making it come to a complete stop. Peter got in front of the now stopped trucks and with both hands on his hips he looked towards the rest of the robbers and said well now, it looks like we got ourselves a sticky situation. Both of the robbers clicked their tongue and took out their pistol and started shooting at him through the windshield. Seeing Peter just dodging they unbuckled their seatbelt and grabbed their rifles. They came out the door guns blazing towards Peter, Peter webbed the feet of one of the guys pulled him off his feet making him fall to ground. Don't fall too hard for me now, I only want to hurt your body, not your feelings. While on the ground although he was in pain he still aimed his gun and fired it at Peter. Seeing this Peter sighed while dodging. While still holding on to the webbed guy's feet he asked them you ever get so mad you hit one motherfucker with another motherfucker, cause I sure haven't. Peter then swung the guy on the ground towards the other guy knocking both of them down and on top of each other. Peter then webbed up both of them, when he walked out up to them he started to pay close attention to them. He noticed that both of them had the same tattoos on their necks. It was the picture of a red ogre, seeing this Peter audibly sighed and groaned ugh great, it's my second day and I already have to deal with a gang. Knowing my luck it's not going to be a good thing. Chapter 21, Chapter 21 Third Person's POV A few minutes earlier. When Gwen separated from Peter she started chasing after the armored trucks with quick speed. While chasing them the hatch to the top of both the armored trucks opened. From it two robbers appeared with turrets lined up and ready to shoot. Gwen's eye widened in shock from seeing them. The robbers started to rapid fire towards the cops in her direction. Some of the cop cars started flipping over due to their tires being shot and them crashing into each other. Some of the cop cars were about to blow up but Gwen quickly ripped the door off its hinges and took them out of there quickly saving their lives. Some were shot and injured but it wasn't lethal. Which made Gwen let out a sigh of relief, she went and grabbed a cop car that was wrecked and lifted it easily in front of her. She started running towards the truck using it as a shield protecting her from the turret. 
Both cops and robbers just looked at her as if she was crazy when she first tried it but their expression quickly grew in shock. Hurry shoot this freak of nature. She's dangerous the guy in the turret said towards the guy that was opposite to him on the other turret. They both started shooting at her but but the cop car was stopping all the bullets from reaching her. The car then started smoking due to the damages, seeing that it gave Gwen an idea. She kept the car in front of her letting and continue to protect her from the bullets. After a few minutes the car was letting out thick black smoke. It was ready to blow up any minute now, Gwen waiting but for a bit and once the car was about to blow up she drop it, got on top of it and jumped at the same time as the car exploded propelling her towards the trucks in a fast pace. While flying she started shooting her webs towards the turret stopping them from shooting. When Gwen overflew the truck due to the force of the explosion she webbed herself back to the closest turret. The robbers who were stuck on the turrets due to her webs tried to lift the turret to shoot at her but couldn't. Although they couldn't see it Gwen gave them a smirk as she said having a problem getting it up. It's nothing to be ashamed of, it's a problem one in every five guys have. Gwen then kicked him in the face knocking him unconscious. Gwen dropped by the door of the driver's door and knocked on the window as she said I'm here to talk about your car's extended warranty. Due to being around Peter so much Gwen has developed the habit of making quips in weird situations. As she made her quip she punched the window of the driver's seat completely shattering it. The driver quickly pulled out his pistol but was unable to shoot it as Gwen grabbed him by the arm and yanked him out of the driver's seat. She threw him towards a building webbing him up. The guy in the passenger seat tried to shot her but Gwen webbed him in the face stopping all of his actions as he tried to rip away the webs. Gwen gracefully maneuvered herself inside the truck, when she took a seat on the driver's seat she slammed on the brakes causing the extra guy on the back to crash head first against her car seat. Aiming her hand behind her Gwen webbed the head of the extra guy that slammed into her seat and shot another web towards the guy that was trying to get the webbing off his head and swung and pulled both of them into each other, completely knocking them down. Gwen just got out of the truck when she finished and jumped back onto action. She climbed on top of the building and started jumping rooftop to rooftop cutting corners and catching up to the truck that tried to get away. When she caught up, she jumped onto the roof of the truck. The other turret guy was still tied up with her web struggling to escape. Gwen just pointed at him as she said one out of five guys and punched him knocking him unconscious. Gwen got on one knee and looked at the truck as she patted it like she was comforting it sorry it's nothing personal and I'm sorry for giving you a blowhole. Gwen punched a hole through the roof scaring the driver causing him to swerve all over the place. The robbers then tried to shoot her through the hole she made but it wasn't wide enough for them to aim at her. Gwen using that hole Gwen shot her webs into the brakes completely stopping the truck. As she did she said sorry boys but it looks like we're going on a break. Due to the webs the brake pedal was now stuck like it was being pressed making the car unable to move. Fuck this shit. This bitch is dead for messing with us said the driver as he picked up a rifle and hopped out the car alongside the other two robbers that were in there. When they all came out they aimed their rifles at her, they didn't hesitate as they started firing their bullets at her. Gwen tried dodging but was only successful for a few times making some bullets graze her. You guys are really gunning for me, hi? Well I hate to break it to you boys but this spider already has her mate. She said as she maneuvered between them, she jumped and wrapped her legs around one of their neck, which she proceeded to flip him towards another guy taking both of them down. Gwen then shot a web towards the last one as she ran towards him, she jumped and pulled on the web making his face meet her knee knocking him out. When she finished she webbed all three together. When everything was over Gwen wiped her hands and waited for the cops to arrive. When she looked at them all together she couldn't help but make one last quip. Well I guess this wraps everything up she said with a satisfied expression. Chapter 22, Chapter 22 Third Person's POV While Peter was looking at the two robbers he caught, he decided to call Gwen just be sure of what he was looking at. Hello. Gwen said in a questioning tone. Are you done gathering everyone up? Yeah I'm done over here. Why do you need help? No, I'm done as well. I just wanted to check if the guys you captured had tattoos on their necks of a red ogre. Hmm? Wait a minute let me check. They do, the three in front of me have them, why is it something important? We most likely have to deal with a gang, so be prepared. We'll meet up in a few minutes to look into this. Emma finish things over at my side. Got it. Same here finished Gwen. With that they ended the call. The police captain that was previously at the bank made his way towards Peter. Spider-Man, although I should be reprimanding you for running off and doing exactly what I told you not to, you still saved the lives of my men out there. You have my thanks, there would have been many casualties without your help. 
So did you get the guy I stuck to the building Peter said awkwardly. The officer scoffed yeah don't worry we got it covered. In a serious matter I want to know, do you know what the red ogre tattoo is on their necks? I called Ghost Spider and she said they had it on their necks as well. The officer closed his eyes while he sighed out a cursed shit, it just had to be them involved in this mess. Yup, I totally know who you are talking about and we are on the same page, officer. The officer just shook his head at Peter's sarcasm and said Officer Cooper, you can just call me Officer Cooper. As for who I was talking about, they call themselves the Crimson Ogres. And it's the worst kind of gang, they deal with almost everything in the books, drugs, gun, distributions, or just plain old robberies like the one that just went down. That's not the worst of it, it's how they keep getting away with it, their leader who goes by the name Henrik Schmidt, he's the worst kind of gangster, the kind that knows what to do and how to get the job done. You know the competent ones. That's all I'm telling you, you can take that piece of information as a thank you gift. Peter nodded as he did his two fingers salute thank you, I'll inform you guys if I find anything useful. Officer Cooper nodded his head and in a serious tone just said be careful and don't underestimate them, they're unpredictably smart as he already knew that Spider-Man was about to go and investigate it. Although Officer Cooper couldn't see it Peter gave him a confident smirk as he said you have nothing to worry about. Peter then jumped and started swinging away while going to meet Gwen. When Peter left Officer Cooper just stayed watching him swing away sigh, am I seriously trusting vigilantes I just met? But their powers, they're real there's no doubt about it. Maybe just maybe they will be the change this city needs. So you must be the ghost spider, thank you for saving our officers back then but what you are currently doing is illegal. Your actions have serious consequences, you should be arrested for it. So this is the very last warning you are going to get, afterwards we would have to take you seriously and take you into custody said an officer sternly. Gwen just slightly lifted her hands and very slowly started walking backwards. She started waving her hands in circular motion, motioning towards the scene of the robbers and armored truck. Gwen wiggled both index fingers between the officer and the robbers on the ground a few times. Which she finished by giving the cop two thumbs up with a smile. Basically saying you got everything covered over here. I'll leave the robbers to you, good. Gwen just quickly got out of there not wanting to deal with whatever was going on. Watching Gwen swing away leaving, the cop just clicked his tongue as he muttered tisk, freaks. And it just had to be two of them. Gwen simply called Peter where do you want to meet up? Have Arnie give you my current location we'll talk here face to face. Okay, I'll see you in a minute with that Gwen ended the call. Both Gwen and Peter met on top of a rooftop and as Gwen landed Peter asked want to take care of a gang. That sounds like fun, who are we up against? These guys that call themselves the Crimson Ogres and that a guy by the name of Henrik Schmidt is the ringleader Peter said as he started to fill Gwen in. I see, do you think Arnie could run a background check on him and get more information about him Gwen asked. Peter nodded as he thought one would think being reincarnated into the past would be a hassle due to no internet but luckily Howard and Tony Stark advanced the creation of it. Making things being stored online something that is common this early on. Arnie search for any and all information you can find about Henrik Schmidt in the police database. Searching. Here's what I could find about him at the current moment. Picture. Henrik Schmidt, 38 years old, date of birth March 7, 1970, gender male. Criminal records, still ongoing Peter said reading what was presented to him. After reading a few things he wonders out loud since when do gangsters graduate college on top of their classes? The disfigured ones apparently, he was probably bullied to the point it drove him to crime said Gwen while looking at his picture. All the robbers were wearing some type of green ogre masks, it wasn't anything to really talk about previously since I just thought that they were only using it as a disguise. But seeing their tattoos it's probably something all members of the gang wear. Arnie. I need you to hack into the cameras all over Queens and see where you can find the place where these type of masks are most seen and located. Right away father, but it'll probably take a few minutes due to how slow my servers are Arnie relayed. Sighing Peter just replied with a yeah go right ahead take your time. I would build her a quantum computer but then I would have to also build an energy source strong enough to be able to support it. By the way we are going I wouldn't be surprised if the power system that supports Queens is almost drained cause of our use and our experiments. I could go build and create one on my own, if I wanted to but I'll wait. I'll wait till Tony gets kidnapped, when he does I sneak and scan the blueprint of the arc reactor and improve on it making it better and stronger. While Peter was deep in thought waiting for Arnie to finish, Gwen was doing handstands and cartwheels to take away her boredom. Done, there are currently two bases which these people with the mask visit frequently. 
and they are at total opposite sides to each other one is over by downtown while the other one is upwards. Both has exactly the same amount people going in and out reported Arnie. One has to be a decoy while the other one is where the main leader is. Gwen said while looking at everything objectively. We have to split of once again, which side do you want to take? Peter said to Gwen. Gwen sighed although she was reluctant to split she knew they had to do it. If they both went together toward one base and it turns out to be the decoy, Henrik may have a chance to escape. So it's better to split off for now, after carefully thinking about it she said umm, I'll take the one uptown. Peter nodded at her decision I guess that leaves me with downtown, call me if you need help. Gwen nodded you do the same. They both fist bumped each other as they jumped towards opposite directions. Chapter 23, Chapter 23 Third Person's POV Peter stood atop the rooftop, surveying the large base of the Crimson Ogre's hideout. He rubbed his chin as he pondered his approach. Sneak in or confront them directly. He muttered to himself, his mind thinking of the pros and cons between caution and directness. On one hand if he sneaks in he has to bother with continuously trying to be careful and not be detected. It would also take a while for him to find and immobilize everyone, who knows if Gwen would be needing his help by then. But if I storm in, they'll all come to me, making it easier to neutralize them swiftly, Peter reasoned. His decision took shape in his mind straight through the front door. Making an entrance might just throw them off balance, he mused, mentally preparing himself for a frontal confrontation. With his mind made up and making his decision he crystallized his plan time to shake things up, he murmured, leaping effortlessly off the building's edge, letting gravity guide him downwards. As he landed with a graceful thud near the entrance, his gaze fixed on the door before him. Without hesitation, Peter swung his leg delivering a forceful kick that sent the door crashing open. Inside, a curious sight greeted him a room filled with figures sporting green ogre masks. Peter couldn't help but quip in his trademark spy day style, hoping to break the tension with humor. Looks like I stumbled into the Shrek fan club meeting. Need help finding your swamp? His words hung in the air, momentarily silencing the room. The assembled figures stiffened, their surprise evident. Before Peter could continue, a voice pierced through the tension. Who's this clown? Get out of here before things turn ugly. You have no idea who you're messing with. As if on cue, a gunshot echoed through the room, the bullet grazing the floor near Peter's feet. He raised an eyebrow, unshaken, attempting to defuse the situation with a light-hearted retort. Whoa, whoa, fellas. Just here to chat maybe discuss the benefits of a wardrobe change. Ignoring Peter's horrible humor, one of the figures, armed and menacing, stepped forward. Last chance, buddy. Leave or face the consequences. Peter's spy day sense tingled, warning him of impending danger. In a fraction of a second, he leaped aside as another shot whizzed past him, shattering a nearby window. Enough with the theatrics. Let's dance. Quipped Peter, his reflexes kicking into high gear. His agile movements allowed him to dodge most bullets, but a few managed to graze him, a reminder of the danger surrounding him. Due to the amount of bullets, some landed on him but didn't fully penetrate his suit. Luckily Peter made his suit with bullet resistance material, but he still needed to be careful. Just cause his suit was bullet resistant, didn't mean it had immunity to it. Swift and acrobatic, Peter disarmed a couple of the goons, their weapons clattering to the ground. His combat skills were on full display as he countered their attacks while evading their punches and kicks. Due to being surrounded, some were lucky to be able to get a hit or two on him. Peter maneuvered his way between the goons dodging and weaving between the bullets and fist. Despite their determined efforts, the goons found it challenging to match Peter's agility and precision. As the room turned into a whirlwind of fists and kicks, Peter would use his webs to stick some of the guys to the wall making them incapable of movement. Peter would pick the guns that were dropped with his web and swing it towards the faces of many different goons knocking some of them out and injuring another some. Peter didn't stop moving. He kicked a guy in the chest sending him flying and crashing into another goon causing them to fall to the floor. Peter would web them up to secure their position and keep them out of the fight. God damn it. Just who are you, you motherfucker, why are you attacking our base? Peter smirked you know, I'm just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man he said as he webbed the guy in the face and brought it down to his knee making him lose consciousness. When he went towards his next opponent, a bullet unexpectedly went and shot him right on his shoulder. Gah. Fuck. Peter said, damn it the suit could only take so much abuse before it gets damaged. He's injured, quick start attacking him, 
we should he able to kill him then. Ha 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 this is what you get for messing with the Crimson Ogres said the goon that shot Peter. The goons became even more aggressive in their assault making it harder for Peter. But the pain of the bullets wasn't enough to stop him. He continued fighting them. Little by little the numbers of the goons started dwindling down causing the goons to become fearful of Spider-Man. Peter stood in front of the rest of the goons in a fighting position as blood dripped down from his shoulders. While panting from all the fighting he has been doing Peter says as a great man once said, I could do this all day. Which caused the goons to take a step back in fear and apprehension. They tightened their grips on their weapons and aimed it at Peter, scared of what he was going to do next. Peter took a deep breath to control his breathing and shot himself forward towards them. Skillfully dodging the bullets with his spy day sense, one by one all the goons were brought down and taken care of. Peter shot his web to the last member on the goons on the floor finishing his scrimmage with them. While breathing heavily Peter thought and now for the boss fight. Peter while using his webs wrapped up his injury to prevent further blood loss. When he finished, Peter started gathering everyone up and webbing them in place to prevent them from escaping. Peter then looked around the building looking for any signs of Henrik's. When he went through the largest door in the entire base, he made it towards an empty office. When Peter realized there really wasn't nobody there he sighed just great this was all a decoy. With a sigh Peter tapped the side of his forehead and said Arnie call the cops and tell them to come and pick them up. Yes father said Arnie. When Peter was about to leave warning signs flashed through his hut in his masked warning. Warning. Miss Stacy is in critical condition. I repeat Miss Stacy is in critical conditions. Arnie said as she showed Peter a map of her known location. Peter's eyes widened in shock, the sound of crackling was heard as the floor cracked, Peter shot himself forward and jumped through the window, exiting the base. Peter started swinging in a fast speed towards Gwen, he would jump on top of rooftops and give himself a jump boost picking up the speed. Peter couldn't hear anything else except the thumping of his own heart as he did everything he could to pick up speed. What Peter didn't notice due to his high emotional stress was the streak of blue lightning he made along the way as he made his way towards Gwen, and at the speed at which he made his way towards Gwen's destination. Chapter 24, Chapter 24 Gwen's POV I quickly made my way through the city swinging from buildings to buildings, following the way Arnie showed. Sigh, he need to think of a better name for her, I almost feel bad just calling her Arnie I feel like I'm bullying her I thought as I arrived at my destination. Peering over the ledge of the rooftop I look over the entrance of the base of the so-called Crimson Ogres. Can't say I'm impressed, I thought with a name Crimson Ogres the place would appear to be grand or something terrifying. I better not waste time, I don't know when Peter might need my help I dropped from the building where I was watching everything and landed while doing a superhero pose as Peter likes to call it. I swear he's too obsessed with the whole superhero part of being a hero I thought as I walked to the front of the building. I just kicked the door opened and as I walked inside the base I froze while looking around, seriously? They're all wearing green? I know Peter said that having a brand is important but is it so important that they would throw away their fashion sense out the window? In order to break the stunned silence I do what my lovely boyfriend does best, throw quips around and break the tension. Green masks? Looks like St. Patrick's Day came early for this gang. But sorry, fellas, no luck of the Irish can save you from ghost spiders webs. What? Who the hell is this chick? One of them asks. Ghost spiders the name don't wear it out I said. The guys just waved me off like I was nothing just go away little lady this isn't a place for someone like you. I didn't say anything else, I just fired my web towards him and pulled him closer which surprised everyone. When he got close I grabbed him by the face and slammed him on the floor. I webbed him up just to be sure he wouldn't be getting up. Seeing what I did they came out of their shock and aimed their guns in my direction. Without hesitation they started to fire, I shot a web towards the ceiling and pulled myself away from their line of fire. Once I was on the ceiling I fired webs to the ground and in between one of the goons. I pulled myself off from the ceiling and shot forward where I proceeded to kick him in the middle of the stomach, knocking the air out of him and sending him flying back crashing into the other members. Due to one of them crashing into each other the gun which they were shooting started firing everywhere making some of them crouch so they wouldn't get hit. The ones that crashed into each other fell to the ground which gave me the perfect opportunity to fire a web at them holding them in place. While I was dodging the bullets I noticed one of the guys took out a knife and crouched down near the webbed up goons. Oh no, they're trying to free the other members. If they get freed then it would have all been for nothing and they rejoin the fight. I fired a web towards the guy but it looked like they were expecting that to happen as soon as my web landed on the guy, two goons went and took a hold of it and pulled me with all their strength towards their direction. 
Due to the unexpected pull I didn't let go of the web, when I got close one of the goons that pulled on the web punched me right on the face, causing me to let go of the web I was holding onto and drop to the floor. Arg I cried out in pain as I held my face while on the floor. While I was on the floor still reeling from the pain my spy day senses went off, I quickly jumped from where I was standing with a back flip. Multiple shots appeared where I was laying down, while still holding my face I said that better not leave a mark, if I go around tomorrow with a black eye people are going to start asking questions and assume the worst. Like you'll make it out alive to go to school girly, the day you decided to mess with the Crimson Ogres is the day you signed your death warrant said one of the goons while taking aim once more and firing. Seeing this I decided that it was for the best if I turned invisible. Which apparently freaked out some of them. What kind of weirdo are you? I didn't answer as I didn't want to blow my cover and position but one by one I started taking them down they all then started shooting randomly. But while taking them down I started getting tired, before this I stopped a car police chase and before now I'm fighting for a long time while being invisible, it's taking a toll on my stamina. The goons then started shooting all over the place trying to at least hit me but couldn't and so thanks to that I was able to quickly subdue everyone. I put my hands on knees and started catching my breath. While I was waiting to recover my stamina, the door at the back of the room opened and out came a large tall muscular man wearing a red ogre mask. Picture. Next to him was a tall well-built looking guy wearing a blue ogre mask. Well look who decided to come to the costume party I quip. So you did this hey, I can't say I'm not impressed. You certainly got skills to be able to take down my men said the guy wearing the crimson mask, who is probably Henrik Schmidt the leader of the gang. He then continued why don't I make you an offer, join my gang, become a member and I don't kill you right here and now for messing things in my turf. Are you trying to court me? I can't see I'm not flattered but you aren't really my type and I'm already in a happy relationship. So sorry if I hurt your feelings but the answer is no. Henrik didn't say anything and but the guy in blue just shook his head in disappointment you should have taken his offer, I was the same as you, I let my pride get in the way and picked a fight with the boss, let's just say that since you are seeing where I'm standing you can already guess what happened. Henrik didn't say anything and came running towards me which took me by surprise, I was planning on getting them talking some more to catch my breath but it looks like I'm still fighting. With a sigh I ran towards him and tried to kick him at the side of his head but he just blocked it with the side of his hand. It feels like metal. Shit, he's wearing metal gauntlets I thought. I tried to kick him in the stomach but he blocked it with a palm. When I tried to take my foot away it was too late, he took a hold of my leg and lifted me up and slammed me back in the ground. Knocking the air out of me. Wheezing I tried to get back up but he was already in front of me. My spy day senses tried to warn me of the danger but it was too late I couldn't move in time. Henrik used the metal gauntlets and punched me in the face disorienting me all I could hear him say was. You got good techniques and power I'll give you that but you don't have any experience being in a real fight. I tried to web his gauntlets to take them off but he just rotated his hand rolling up the webs and pulled me closer where he proceeded to headbutt me in the face. Causing blood to drip down my face and into the mask. This isn't good I thought. While still in pain I went kicked him in the chest which pushed him back a bit I then continued punching and kicking him, some landed successfully but some he managed to block. I went to try and punch him in the face but he grabbed my fist. I then tried and punch him with my other fist but he took a hold of that one as well. Before I could kick him a gunshot was heard which was followed by pain assaulting my legs. Our guy screamed as I was almost brought to my knees but that wasn't the only one. Multiple shoots were heard, the suit couldn't suffer more abuse which the bullets tore through and hit me in the legs, stomach and arms. I turned to look who it was and it was the guy wearing the blue mask. Before I could say anything else. Henrik smashed his head onto me, knocking me unconscious. I kept coming in and out of consciousness I tried to get up but the pain was too much. I could just lay on the floor slowly losing consciousness, Peter, please help me. Is all I could think with tears running down my face. While I kept coming in and out of consciousness, I saw the guy with the blue mask point his gun at my head and said you should have taken his offer and shot his gun. Bang. Nuuu. Everything then went dark. Third person's POV. When the blue ogre shot his bullet towards Gwen's head, a cold wind blasted off from her body. It was so cold it made both Henrik and the blue ogre back up in wonder. The bullet that should have gone right through her head was now wedge in the ice that formed all over Gwen's body. As a defense mechanism Gwen's body encased itself in ice to keep itself alive. Preventing her wounds from bleeding out further and stopping the bullet from reaching her head. The blue ogre in shock went and tried to fire more bullets but they would just bounce off the ice that formed. What should we do now boss asked the blue ogre. 
Go get a flamethrower or a rocket launcher and fire it at her. That should be more than enough to kill her, no matter how much ice forms in her body. Right boss the blue guy said as he went and got what he needed. Chapter 25, Chapter 25 Third Person's POV Peter fell from the sky, landing in front of the Crimson Ogre's base that Gwen went to. The ground beneath him cracked due to the force of his landing, but he paid no attention to that, the only thing that mattered was Gwen's safety. He started making his way inside the base. Once inside, he saw multiple goons tied up and knocked out in Gwen's webbing. Although he wanted to be proud of what he was seeing, his main priority was Gwen's safety. As he walked a few feet ahead, he spotted a guy wearing a blue ogre mask a few feet away, aiming a rocket launcher at Gwen's encased body. Peter shot his web towards the guy and pulled himself towards him, aiming his feet towards the torso. When he made contact, he was sent flying back, crashing against the wall. As he crashed against the wall, blood splashed from his mouth as he started coughing. Peter slowly started walking towards him. A slash N, multiple musical notes musical note where you go I go, what you see I see multiple musical notes musical note and the sky falls and IT crumbles multiple musical notes musical note. Peter knelt towards the blue mask guy, looked him in the eye, and said in a cold voice, no one, and I repeat, no one messes with my woman. Peter then punched him right on his mouth, breaking both the mask and his teeth, knocking him out completely. Peter sighed as he got up and went towards Gwen's direction. He knelt down once again and put a hand on Gwen's ice. It's cold. Arnie, tell me her condition and what happened. Yes, father. Arnie then went and explained and showed him everything that happened through Gwen's perspective. It's like her body went into a mild hibernation, her heart rate is slow, it was like a defense mechanism. Father, can I make a hypothesis about what is happening? Peter, while slowly caressing the ice nodded his head. I believe the spider's venom might not have undergone complete integration into your bloodstream. When both you and Miss Stacy initially demonstrated your abilities, scarcely a day had passed since the spider bite. This suggests that your powers might still be evolving or developing, as the venom continues its gradual assimilation within your biology. It could potentially lead to further enhancements or undiscovered facets of your abilities over time. I see, you may be right. When we first got bitten, I was way too excited about the prospect of having superpowers. I hadn't considered that possibility. But how can she create ice? It doesn't make sense, and it shouldn't be possible. Ice isn't something really related to a spider. I can retort that lightning isn't either, father. Lightning. How could she possibly know about that? I haven't even mentioned it before. What do you mean, lightning? I see, so you weren't aware of it. Well, you see, Father, due to your high emotional distress, lightning started manifesting from your body, helping you move faster. Here, I can get a CCTV footage of the event, Arnie said as she brought out a video of Peter swinging through the city at a fast speed. Image. I see, I got a lightning, cool. And it's blue and black. New color scheme. But that still doesn't explain how Gwen was able to develop ice-related powers. This is only a hypothesis but the spider's venom could have contained unique compounds or proteins that, when introduced into Ms. Stacy's bloodstream, triggered a reaction at the genetic level. This reaction might involve a specific gene or set of genes associated with temperature regulation or manipulation. These venom-induced changes could potentially activate dormant or previously inactive genetic pathways related to the body's response to cold. The venom's components might bind to receptors or enzymes in Gwen's cells, initiating a cascade of molecular events that lead to the expression of proteins capable of manipulating temperature. This speculative process could involve the modification of cellular mechanisms responsible for regulating heat transfer, altering the behavior of proteins involved in thermal regulation, or even stimulating the creation of specialized structures within her cells capable of generating or controlling cold temperatures. We would need to do a blood test to really make sure, though. Peter just nodded while still caressing the ice. Just wait a little longer. Once I take care of him, we'll go home. Peter then stood up and walked towards the large metal door that clearly led to the main office of whoever was in charge. Peter punched the door to open, but his fist tore right through it. Oops. It looks like I don't know my own strength, Peter said plainly. Henrik jumped back in shock as Peter's hand just went right through the metal door. Peter slid his hand out of the hole and just ripped it off its hinges and threw it on the floor. As the door reached the floor, it made a loud bang showing just how heavy the door really was. Normally, 
this is the part where I start making quips about your appearance and the situation, but I'm not feeling really neighborly right now. Usually, I would be your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, but right now I'm just Spider-Man, Peter said as he advanced towards Henrik, his footsteps leaving imprints on the floor, marking his determined stride toward him. What has my gang done to you for two spider-related vigilantes to be coming after us? Henrik said as he got into a fighting position. At first, we came looking for you since your little leprechauns went looking for gold, but then it became personal. The hell? You came to us and picked a fight, and just because one of you got injured and wasn't up to the task, you're going to get mad and come looking for revenge. You are right, it's our fault this happened. We were over our head and went picking a fight with someone we weren't ready to face due to our inexperience, and it almost got us killed. But our intentions were never to kill you. It was to stop you. I have no reasonable explanations for it, and I don't really need one. I don't care that it was our fault in the first place. The only reason I need is that you hurt the woman I love. What other reason does a man ever need? I guess I can respect that, Henrik said, followed by him running towards Peter with his fists in a defensive boxing position. But just because I respect it doesn't mean I'll allow you to do as you please and disrespect me in my turf. He started sending multiple jabs and punches towards Peter. Peter, using his spider senses, dodged them while redirecting Henrik's fist elsewhere. Peter sent a kick towards him, which Henrik blocked slightly. Lifting both arms when Peter sent the kick, although it hit the metal gauntlets, Henrik was sent flying back, breaking a table with his body as he crashed against the wall. He looked at his shaking hands at this point. What strength and power. I know I saw him break through the metal door with just his fist, but still. He then tried to get up, but Peter webbed up his hands with multiple webs. He tried to lift up his hands with his gauntlets, but the webs were too many and too strong for him to do anything, he was stuck on the ground. Peter shot two webs towards the wall and pulled himself forward towards Henrik, delivering a knee right to his face, breaking the ogre mask and his nose. Peter picked him up by his shirt and tossed him out of the room and out to where Gwen was. While getting up from the floor, he held his face. Shit, my mask. Damn it, not my mask. When Peter approached him, Henrik spiraled into a drunken rage, his emotions overtaking him. He ran towards Peter without any form of defense and started swinging madly at him. Peter sent webs towards his hands and pulled them down to the ground, but Henrik tried to do the same thing he did with Gwen. Luckily, Peter saw what happened and didn't let that happen. Peter pulled him towards him and just as he was about to attack, Henrik's counter-attacked. When Peter pulled Henrik towards him, Henrik cocked back his fist and sent it towards Peter. Peter's spy day senses tingled, warning him of the danger. Peter let go of the webs, but it was too late. By the force of which Peter pulled him, Henrik was already in front of him, not giving Peter any time to think of a countermeasure. Henrik's metal gauntlet punched Peter right across his face, leaving him slightly disoriented. Henrik adjusted himself when he landed and sent another punch towards Peter's stomach, knocking the air out of him and making him start coughing. Henrik then stomped his foot on Peter's to stop him from flying back and started wailing on Peter, throwing punches left and right until blood started coming out of Peter's mask. Peter extended his hand, stopping one metal gauntlet and then the other. Peter did what Gwen wanted to do before she got shot. He jumped and kicked Henrik right in the center of his chest, sending him flying backward. Peter kept up by web shotting himself forward. When he arrived, he got on top of Henrik and started punching him across the face repeatedly. We're about to upgrade your looks to handsome Squidward level, up in here, Peter quipped. The more Peter punched him, the madder he got when he thought about Gwen's condition. Peter, in all his anger, cocked his fist all the back, and due to his emotions, his fist started sparking blue and black lightning. While looking at the face of the unconscious Henrik, Peter swung down his fist at full strength and speed, but changed its direction at the last second, missing his head by a few inches. The entire area's floor cracked and broke, with lightning flashing between the cracks. Peter started breathing heavily due to his tiredness, injury, and almost killing him. Remember what Uncle Ben said, don't let the anger control me, not let it consume me. Deep breaths, Peter, calm yourself, Peter thought. Peter wrapped Henrik in thick webs along with his sidekick who had the blue mask. He went towards Gwen's encased body, wrapped her in webs, and put her on his back, webbing her up to look like a backpack. This place is decently big. I'm 100% sure it has janitor closets and cleaning utensils. Now I just need to find them, Peter thought as he started looking around. 
When he found them, he tapped the side of his head. Arnie, go through the footage and show me all the places where Gwen and I lost any blood. I don't want to find any clones of mine later down the line. Yes, father. Scanning footage, here are all the moments where you lost blood and their location, said Arnie. With another sigh, Peter picked up the mop and got to work. When he finished, he looked at the tied-up goons, nodded his head, and turned invisible. Arnie, contact Officer Cooper and Captain Stacy about whom we captured, and make it untraceable. Of course, father. Peter left with Gwen on his back heading towards the base he had just come from. When he arrived, he saw a few cop cars making their way towards the base. Shit, he thought as he picked up the speed. When he arrived, he quickly cleaned up all his blood with the cleaning utensils and quickly left as the police got out of their cars, sighing in relief. With one last look towards the base, he headed back towards their hideout. Thanks for listening. <laughs>